Happy holidays! If this is your first time listening to the Lincoln Cast, welcome! I'm just putting this here to let everyone know that in normal Lincoln Cast edition, we start talking about Guild Wars 2 proper after about 43 minutes. Uh, so, whether you fast forward or not, it's up to you, but if you want to listen to stuff about maybe The Hobbit, uh, Josh's thoughts on the games industry, and cosplay, hey, maybe check the whole thing out. Aside from that, have a Merry Christmas slash New Year slash whatever else you celebrate. Bye. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Linkcast. This is the Jump on Community's Guild Wars 2 podcast of the week of, I don't know, I, it's episode 34. That's all I've got. Durin is here. How are you doing? That is accurate. That There's no... Yeah. Be greed on holiday that, wishes. I'm terrible at holiday wishes. You are the worst. Okay. This is the week of Christmas. Is the, it the we'll, week of Christmas? I mean, Shit, is this the week of Christmas? This is the week of, Yeah. It is, Merry it is, Christmas! Yeah, Christmas. Wait, we, we traveled forward in time? We, we traveled uh, forward in time, and this is... Totally being recorded the week of Christmas, not two weeks prior. I I have no idea what you're talking about. I've I've there's snow outside. That's a lie. It's there's actually, it, it, there's, there's no snow outside. It cannot, it cannot be I live, I live in the Midwest, and there's no snow outside. Oh, that's sad. It was like seven degrees. Good point. Ah, see that. See, at least for me, the snow is happening on the other side of the fucking world. For you, it'd be it's just slightly north. If you drive north, you've got snow. That sucks. Anyway, also joining me today is Thurbleton. How are you doing, Thurps? I can drive an hour for snow any time of the year because I live next to a mountain. Merry Christmas! Nubarama, also here today. <laughs> Happy holidays. Do Canadians celebrate Hanukkah, Christmas? Kwanzaa. Um, Happy non-denominational holiday. Yes. non <laughs> It's Happy Anything. December Ween. December Oh, Ween. yes. Oh, I've yeah. heard that it, one before. It snowed, it snowed a bunch of times this month, but it has yet to like stay on the ground. You're in Canada, it's but I live in like a city, and it's like smoggy and terrible. Wait, so how does that That's work? So it's a bo- It's like like 15 during the day and minus during the night, or something? No, it's it's about hovering around zero. It just doesn't snow or precipitate in general here. People in your Celsius, really oh. crazy. What, right. where, where else do they use Fahrenheit, man? Puerto Rico, the only place that America, matters. where it matters. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Shinboy is also here. <laughs> Hello, yep. Shinboy. What's America's up? America's awesome. Uh, uh, nothing much. I finished reading The Hobbit. Geez, so that's I, a thing. I, did you like it? I did, actually. We'll get there. I, it, it took me a while to get over Tolkien's, you know, I'm going to show off about how good of a writer I am style. <laughs> Let me describe uh. every single thing that's in the book slowly. <laughs> but that would just be the book. Merry Christmas. Yeah, also, book. you don't want to hear from us today that this is pretty no. much an episode not about us jackasses. Because I think we're also doing, are we doing also like another episode going up this week? I don't know. Not? Probably. No, I don't no, know. Are we doing Christmas special? Yeah. Episode. This is the Christmas special, isn't it? I guess. Yes. yes. This is the Christmas, the Christmas week episode. We're okay. highly organized. Festivus. We are. It's two weeks beforehand. I mean, it is the day of Christmas. We don't have time to decide whether it's, we were recording It's Hanukkah time right now. Um, it is. Is it Hanukkah time? Yeah, oh, my yes. boss is Jewish. It's the same time, oh. isn't it? Or do they just happen at the same time? No, it's... Uh, it's right. mm. Well, Hanukkah's... Just, yes and no. It's, it's longer. I mean, yeah. yes. They, <laughs> they do open is that, was that jealousy I heard? No. Seven days? But it's probably not that great. Present. Seven days? Like, isn't it seven days? Also I'm joining us days. is... Yeah, those are terrible. I'm Merry Christmas, New Barama. Um Josh you Foreman. Too. Definitely Merry Christmas to you. How are you doing, Josh? Excellent. Merry Christmas. Happy Yay. Festivus. Yes, Festivus, Festivus for the rest of us. So if people don't know you, which would probably be a lot of people, introduce yourself. Who, who is the man, the mystery, Josh Foreman? Superstar. Uh, okay, so I'm an environment artist at ArenaNet. I've been here since 2003, since uh, before Guild Wars 1. Ooh. Cool. So I've been doing a lot of art and design for nine-ish you years have, here. You did not hear it, but Nubarama just kind of jizzed. <laughs> just a little bit that's disgusting guys no i didn't <laughs> anyway okay we definitely have some guild wars one fans here so yeah so so you joined in prior to guild wars one going out continue yeah so i was actually the first uh, environment artist that they hired 
they had some designers that were making maps, but uh, first one that was, you know, the artist. Uh, <laughs> Lay out. <laughs> it's very important. Wait, but, so uh, yeah, so that and that's what I've been doing here ever since. Do you guys have and, like uh, a lead environment artist? Like, is that how it works over there, or because if you're the first one hired, then you're probably pretty high up in the chain in terms of environment art, wouldn't you? Uh, not really, because I I haven't pursued uh those career opportunities right. because I'm not interested in filling out spreadsheets and doing meetings all day. <laughs> oh, Going from being an artist to an accountant. But that's such sucks. an exciting life. Yay. <laughs> um, now the, uh, the, the guy who was, the guy who was hired uh, a week after me and, and he will contest this, uh, Dave Beetlestone, he ended up being the environment art lead and yeah, he gets to do about, you know, maybe half an hour of art a week. So oh, yeah, so I'm happy bad. to let, let him do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I built a statue in honor of him, though. The uh, in, in Beetleton, that statue of the guy with the three dogs. That's no the, way! Uh, oh wow! Oh, yeah. Okay, what? That's pretty cool. The NPC guy, like that. I, I sculpted that all out and. Did that <laughs> Holy <statue>. crap! Crazy! <laughs> Crazy! Mad yeah. scoops. Um, he loves, he so, it. how much of it was one did you touch? If you did Beetleton, that's already like an instant like touchstone for many people. I, I think everyone here. Remembers Beals for Durin because he's a heathen. So, what else did you touch there? Uh, all the way back to Guild Wars One. Well, how, how much of mm -hmm. how much of the game was your baby? Well, uh, let's see. I was employee thirty two. Okay. Thirty one. Yeah. Uh, low thirties, and uh, I don't even know it. I, I don't. I don't think we were more than fifty or sixty when we shipped Guild Wars One. That's cr okay. Well, well give us an idea. How, what what's your size now? You'd be in the two hundreds, uh, right? Like what two hundred? Two seventy five ish, I think. Jeez. All right. Sure. Good lord. So you'd say that most that, of Guild has Wars One. Has it gotten 1. to the point where there's faces you like don't know yet? Like, whoa, is he new or is he just like delivering something? Yeah, that that point comes at about. 50-ish for me. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is you don't know anyone who works at a reading that. You're just all a lie, a facade. No, I, actually, one of, the, one of the cool things about the perspective of working at a place so long is, is I do have many branching connections. Right. Gotcha. But yeah, so in, in general, it boils yeah. down to you. Oh, you broke up there. Sorry. Um, oh, I, I, who, I did? Yes. Okay, uh, I can repeat that real quick. Go ahead. So I was just saying one of the benefits of working at a place so long is that I have a lot of connections with a lot of people in different departments. Yep. So that helps a lot with uh, getting stuff done. When I, when I have an idea, uh, I'm going to say that like a man, when I have an idea, <laughs> uh, like, for instance, the, the Shark Maw Caverns that I did in Lion's Arch, that little jumping puzzle with the ghost pirate captain. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Need, talk to people in sound design and in writing and in you know every department and i have friends everywhere so uh, i was able to get all the resources that i needed relatively quickly and easily oh man that's what we're we, we, saying is connection in all those videos instead of like say colin johansson it should really be you <laughs> yeah, you're the face of arena net <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I have my small little domain that I'm knowledgeable in, but when it comes to you know the hardcore balancing and that kind of stuff, that's that's so far above my head. I have no idea. <laughs> he, he, he can't admit to it now, but he's actually sculpting the, the new world. So when you zoom out on the map, it actually has a picture of his face. <laughs> 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 little okay. by little, his There's plan will come to fruition. Here. In Shark Maw Caverns, the very southeast corner of it, if you run around that whole maze, you will see my uh, insignia on the mini map. So. Ooh. Oh, that's crazy. Now, now I need a, okay, we all we all have a mission after we finish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we have to find this. Yeah, if, if you follow if you follow the captain as he does his whole spiel, uh, yeah, there's my JCF in a circle. That's crazy. Oh. That again, yeah. mad oh. scoops. But we are danger. We we are straying <laughs> dangerously on topic at the moment. I wanted to <laughs> veer sharp to the left here. Um, so you worked in Guild Wars One, yes. What else have you worked on? Because you were somewhere else before reading that, weren't you? Oh, yeah. So before that, I, I worked in uh, at a company called Outrage Entertainment in Michigan. Right. And uh, so we did the Descent games. Or, well, sorry. We did Descent 3 and Descent Mercenary, the okay. add-on pack. Sure. So when uh, 
when Descent One was made, they, they did one and two, and then the founders split off and made sister companies, basically, one in Illinois that became Volition, and then Outrage, where I worked. And right. so we were sister companies, and we shared news groups and resources. I, I got to help them out with Red Faction and stuff like that. Oh, crazy. Um, oh, yeah, wow. so it was really neat just following the development of so many different products at once. Yeah, and how, how, many, of the, well, how many projects back then would you have been working on at any given time? Uh, typically one at a time. Okay. Uh, it was, it was near the, the sinking of the Titanic when Interplay was floundering and stopped paying all their, uh, <laughs> yep. sure. <laughs> uh, you know, they were the publisher and they had, I don't know, probably 20 studios that they were funding and they would just kind of pull this shell game where they'd pay one studio one month and then, you know, skip milestones for other ones. That, that was a pretty, pretty hairy time there, but, uh, right. uh eventually HQ bought us. And then we shipped the game we were working on, and then they closed us down. And that's how I came to Arena. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I, don't mean, I don't mean to be a downer here, but look where Arena Net's at, and look where THQ's at. Let's see how that yeah. works. Yeah, let's see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's doing pretty well for them. I'm happy. Yeah. So there's a stopping point here. I, I, I started these questions with a, with a point in mind because I mean, definitely get there in the future, but um, you worked at. Did you work at Paradigm? Is is oh, sorry, Paradox Paradox. Studios? Is our database no. off there, or did you work there? No. Yes. No. 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 See, New <laughs> Robin just died a little bit inside. He was so excited, but don't worry about it. Anyway, so well, remind me what Paradox did. Uh, Paradox you... made all of those crazy strategy games: um, Europa like... Universalis, Hearts of Iron, etc. Yeah, oh, he's a he's a big fan, is what he's trying to say. Yeah, noob, noob is a little bit crushed, but that's fine. Yeah. Anyway, oh, Magic is Magic is fantastic. Axis, so yeah, oh, it's right. amazing to me. <laughs> it is amazing. Anyway, yeah. so uh, when we were setting out this podcast, I, I I definitely wanted to start here. So how we usually open the show is we all talk about what we've been doing this week, and then move on to maybe give us two, two stuff an hour later. But we're going to cut that down this week. But there's definitely something I want to hear. Josh, you guys had like a company outing yesterday. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. We went and saw The Hobbit. So I really want to ask you about that. So you went I with them. I, I see late watch- in, in the, the, the Hobbit film time if, you know, it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I so have you, so have you read huh? much of Tolkien's work? Like, are you a Hobbit guy or are you... Oh, totally. Yeah, I was I was raised on Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, George oh, MacDonald. That, that's cool. That We'd be guys. saying the same things, but I'm only 24, so it's kind of saying something different, I guess. But wait, well, how old are you? I guess just you'd be... I'm 37. I don't want to guess. So yeah, exactly. You'd, you'd be in a very different era to me. But at least for for me, I was raised of Tolkien... Who else here? Duran, did, you don't read much, do you? You're oh, yeah. My, 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 my dad actually <laughs> read uh, The Hobbit to us when we were kids. Oh, for like a, wow. a, a, a bedtime that's crazy. Story. That's adorable. New? Yeah, that, that, that's what my parents did. Um, my parents probably my favorite piece of fiction night. is Token. Like, the only fiction I've read, really, was Token. That's okay. And Shinboy? Oh, I, I just finished The Hobbit, so. <laughs> like, I had, I had to read it in. in like grammar school years ago, um, just bits and pieces of it. So I never read the whole thing front to back cover, and I finally did that, you know, in time for the movie. I enjoyed it. So, and Thurbleton, I guess I have to touch. I, now that I've gone to halfway around the table, I guess I have to finish. Do you love The Hobbit, Thurbs? Um, I, I haven't read read The Hobbit. You're going to yell at me, but I, I've read the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's just, um, I really love the Tolkien's work. It's the way Jackson, I, I have some. I love it, but at the same time, I was like, they, they, they didn't do the proper justice. I hate you so much. Yes, one of those people. <laughs> I know you do. God damn it. See, when you said still, you hadn't read The Hobbit. I still think is the best one. Yes, uh, I, I agree. agree. I Two Towers. Agree. Two Towers is you, you second. You know what I'm waiting for? I, I'm waiting for at some point some director slash studio to have the balls to take a book and literally, 100% literally <laughs> transcribe it and make a film from it. But did you yeah, really want the, the, so. the Twilight movies? They are tell- my friends have told me that is the Twilight movies. I, those really? are the Twilight yeah, movies. Of all the places for that to happen, right? Yay. When I heard it was going um, to be three movies, I was really hoping that that was why. Yeah. Was this going to be three? It's two, isn't it? I think a lot of stuff. Oh, this is three. 
It's three? It's another thr- yeah, it's tr- three. trilogy? It's three. Apparently, I'm getting sure. a bunch of stuff from the appendices. Um, so yeah, mm. it's not just book content, yeah. necessarily. I don't know how I feel about that. But uh, Josh, what's your favorite? Um, d- did you like the Lord of the Rings movies? Were they your style? Oh, absolutely. They're, they're my solid 10, and every movie compares you know, to them. So, so what you're saying is, Thurbleton, you are a crazy motherfucker who's wrong about everything. Thurbleton, you right. suck. You are the there, worst okay. person. I, I admit to being crazy. <laughs> oh, I, I totally understand. I mean, there's, it, there's certain things that, that literature can evoke that film cannot. And if that is oriented that way, then you're going to miss out on things. You know? well, no, it, it's, uh, it's very simple. The, the thing I took away that was like the main moral from the whole trilogy of the books, like, like what the hobbits learn, wasn't shown in the movies. And that yeah. was the whole them going back to the Shire and like using what they learned. I don't know, like, like, man. He spent I, an hour and a half having them go back to the Shire and do other things. Oh, yeah, gra- granted, they they did put a ton of endings in there, so I can understand why. Granted, they the Return of the point. King extended edition God was damn. four hours as is, <laughs> <laughs> which I love. I love every <laughs> second of it. And actually, and actually, Shin Boy, that that brings up um, like my issue and why why you know we'll probably never see a movie that is truly one hundred percent genuine to the book. Is movies are like the one entertainment medium that is limited to a, a very strict time frame. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to see Tom Bombadil. It's over like decision. two hours. It's just too much. I would be bored by Tom Bombadil. He was, he's actually not that exciting a character. I recently no. reread The Lord of the Rings, at least like uh, The Fellowship of the Ring, and I actually got bored of it and put it down. We, I, I have to say, I did not expect that reaction from myself because when I was growing up, I used to love The Lord of the Rings. It was my touchstone. But having progressed to modern fiction, that kind of stuff, but I can go into it forever. Anyway. I found the Lord of the Rings boring in retrospect, but specifically Tom Bombadil, that entire sequence, that fever dream in the forest, was just the weirdest thing. The weirdest yeah, thing. Is. I mean, it's, as, as, as you know, a, a fan of, of the book, it's unfortunate, but yeah, there's obviously a reason to cut that. There, that that does not make good entertainment on well, screen. That's why, that's why I like the fact that they took um, A Song of Ice and Fire and turned it into Game of Thrones, the show, as opposed to a string of movies, because while they still cut things here and there... Yeah, they still cut They stuff. have 10 hours for a book as opposed or to they, two and a half. Or they split um, Twilight Breaking Dawn into two movies. <laughs> well, like, The Throne of Swords is getting split into two seasons. That was seasons. a brave decision. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I actually kind of want to see that movie. No, you I don't. See what it is. No, you do no, not. No, not because I want to see Twilight. Well, maybe a little bit of that. But, like, because I just want to see how, how that movie works. Just, like, what's the appeal? I probably might not get it. No, I wouldn't. You, should, you should watch the uh, Red Letter Media review. Oh, yeah, I, I saw yes. that review. It was great. It was absolutely great. <laughs> I, I, I will still recommend Star anybody Star. in Texas, Master Pancake Theater covers of Twilight. How, what's, what is that? Oh, that's, that's, that sounds extremely regional. Those are dubs, right? Well, no, it's uh, I saw them in, in uh, Portland, Oregon when they like toured over here or something. But it, um, Mystery Science Theater 10,000, I think, or whatever. I can't remember the, the yep. exact name. There's mm-hmm. a TV show, right? Uh, right. In, that, series, in that yeah. same vein where they're like comedians talking in front of the movie. Yeah. All right. And, so and it's a they add their own track. sound clips and everything. Isn't that Riff Track or whatever it's called? Riff yeah. Tracks? I'm that, sure there's many, na- there's many names it. for them. Yeah. Right. But yeah, it, that's, that's the one time I've seen Twilight. When people when comedians are making fun of it, but there if we're is, talking about red letter media reviews, we have to go with the Star Wars prequels. Those are just masterpieces uh, of comedy. I don't know. I, I, I can't. I, I don't know. Jar Jar Binks was the greatest Star Wars character. <laughs> Shut up. Get out. Oh. I fucking hate you. <laughs> I hate you so much. Anyway, um, I think Jar Jar Binks has to bring us back on topic. Yeah. <laughs> so, Josh. With that said. How do you like The Hobbit? Because we haven't seen it yet. Like, I, I don't think yeah. it's even out here. So. I'm watching it We are waiting Thursday for the really cheap theaters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to watch it in IMAX at 48 FPS. It's going to be yeah, great. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm almost positive we didn't see the 48 uh, okay. version because I was expecting to not see the film stutter when the camera swoops by vistas and um, stuff. T- so it wasn't 3D, though. So that's main no, way. No. It wasn't in 3D either. Two D twenty four. But you still got yeah. the. Oh, so you still got the film stuff. Oh, because it'd be twenty four. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Okay, yeah, sure. So I really only saw half the movie. <laughs> 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 so, so that half of the movie. How is it? You know, it, it's Exa- not the direction I would have. Exactly. Put See, right. him sighing there for a second is exactly <laughs> what was wrong over. with that movie. That's what I've heard was, was wrong with that movie. I don't know. It was so incredibly brilliant and beautiful right but it was a cartoon it was the most brilliant 
beautiful cartoon you've ever seen. Oh, that's that's an interesting. That's probably. What was I don't it? know. I saw Bambi. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> well, like, was like the main problem that it seemed like it was stretched out because I I have a friend that that saw it the other day and he said that his main issue with it was that it didn't feel like it needed to be almost three hours. I didn't feel like it dragged much, but then I'm so just I, my it's it's eye candy for me. So I'm just, you, you're probably like drinking in everything you saw, right? Time. So it's probably impossible for me to get bored in any Lord of the Rings movie, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, well, the the most interesting decision I thought was every um, action set piece was a platform jumping game. Like it was fourteen guys jumping on moving platforms. Oh wow. I have not heard it described like that, but I, to- I totally see what, just from the pre-release footage, I know exactly what you're talking about. That's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah, totally true. There, there was very little fighting. It was all running and jumping. <laughs> so well, I, guess, I guess, like, The well, Hobbit is very different, and there's no big battles in well, The Hobbit. There, yeah, that's there what is, I was going to say. But, yeah, there, there, I mean, there is, but there's not nearly as much as there was right. in, it, in The Lord of the Rings. It's not like there's three, mo- three movies, and two of them have, like, huge major battles like that. Well, there's right. yeah, but the, there's the big one. I forgot what it was called. Like Four I don't think Kings? it's I don't think it's um, scale Battle of the Five Armies. Five, Ar- right. yeah, that one's gonna be the last movie. I hey, I assume. I just read the book, so if I don't remember that, I assume it's gonna be the last movie. <laughs> so that's gonna be three uh, movies. I have that to much. say, I was I, I was shocked. Um, the, you know, one of many fans' favorite scenes from the original trilogy is is the Gollum, you know, skipping Absolutely. out over the his decision about the ring, right? Yeah. Right. And uh, Gollum's performance in this movie just blew that one so far. Uh, oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Uh, the friend of mine who saw it said the, um, the riddle scene was by far the best scene in the movie. They nailed it. Yeah. Damn. Th- that's the thing, also, right? I, I love the idea of, I love the, idea of, of great. Lord, Lord of the Rings movies awesome. being called the original trilogy now. <laughs> oh. Let's not draw that line. Like, Take that, Star Wars you- fan. <laughs> I guess... Hopefully it's not like named like the Lord of the Rings prequels or something like something terrible like that. Uh, <laughs> moving of Star right Wars along. DS. No, because the the crazy thing is for the first tr- trilogy, and that was the first time Andy Serkis really did that thing, right? He, him right. golluming up was the first time he really got into motion capture being like that kind of actor. And he's done that in so many movies since then. Or in, in many cases, he's been directing those scenes. So the fact that he's gotten legitimately better in this one, I'm not surprised at all because he is a spectacular actor. So would you say, like, in its own merits, it's a movie worth watching? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's still definitely top of my list of films that I love. I mean, I will watch it over and over and over again. Right. There you go. What, so Good enough for me. As a person who works on, like, digital renditions of, like, New Worlds... So that's kind of what they're doing. They're built like, for many of these cases. They're legitimate, like live action, full scale reconstructions of Tolkien's work, right? What, what's your opinion of that? How, do you do you admire them working within the constraints of reality? Like, how, would you work on a movie like stage and like cinema, that kind of stuff? Oh sure. I mean, I I do. I've I've created props for films and stuff like that, and it's it's a blast. Um, yeah, I mean, what what is work is just hands down the industry's best, in my opinion. They they just have so much passion behind what they do. A, a lot of companies are technically really great, you know, ILM and and Stan Winston and them. But the yeah, I think the passion just really comes through with Weta. Could you imagine being on a multiple year shoot building those? Like, would you? I would love to do that as an engineer by trade. That would that is. But you exactly live in Australia, and they filmed that in New Zealand. It's basically, like, <laughs> don't throw away from where you live. Well, the crazy thing about Weta, though, is they, by New Zealand policy, um, they can't hire foreign people above um, local people. So I'd have oh. to be a New Zealand citizen to have like a decent shot. Um, with my little experience of working for them, which is kind of <laughs> crazy, but um, but no, yeah, that's that's always been fascinating to me because with with tech nowadays and be able to make worlds i i was just i was it's sad it's kind of sad to me that josh has a little bit of experience in that area because the duality between digitally recreating a world and actually having to physically make it is so huge i would love to get two of those people in a room and just have them fight that's pretty much it. oh yeah well okay so so i originally went to the art institute of seattle and got a degree in industrial design okay because cool. Because I wanted to make animatronic monsters for movies. Nice. And, um, totally awesome. And then yeah. Jurassic Park came out, and I, I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> I'm going the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs>
And then I got into games, and uh, I've been in games ever since, not because of, of what I can create now, but I'm, I feel like I'm investing in the medium, right. and I'm you know, growing with it, and ho- I'm hopefully helping to shape it. Um, so I, I think 10 or 20 years down the road, it's just going to be, hands down, the most powerful medium that's ever, you know, mankind has ever created. So, so Oh, absolutely, yeah. The, the the would you say the main wall there is const like hardware just like actual physical hardware or do you think there's something that hasn't been done in the art space yet it, it's both yeah, yeah. absolutely I, I, i'd be with you in that because I, I like i especially in terms of like your words too there's definitely parts in that where i can see like for example um i'm not sure who wrote it but there's there's blog posts made by you guys talking about how they had to figure out well, Divinity's Reach in that area is some. It has to at least somewhat resemble a place that can actually physically exist. So there's farms and that kind of stuff, and like water spouts and that kind of thing. Um, and having to create that, the transition between what we see as video game realism now to what it could be in the future is just spectacular to me, and in, in as well as speculative like realism. Like for example, Mass Effect is about as close as I've got seen um, in in these recent speculative video game fiction as to something I'd like to see in the future and how much of that stuff work. There's trash cans. There's the equivalent of like trash disposal and shit in Mass Effect, which yeah. you don't see too much. Like, What's your thoughts on that? Where do you see the industry going? Okay, so, well, there, there's, there's a couple different... I think about this kind of fiddly bits all the time. Like, <laughs> you know, for instance, I would love if I could to think through the entire you know, economy and weather patterns and this, and you know, there's, there's a castle here and there's a pub here. And for 300 years, people have been coming out of the pub and pissing at this spot on the wall. So it's eroding <laughs> and there's a cattle <laughs> here and they're eating down the crop. So there's more erosion in that part. And there, you know, and that creates a little uh, muddy spot. And, you know, that kind Absolutely. of stuff really excites me. Uh, there's just, the, the way that the industry has of dealing with mass amounts of content right now, mm-hmm. it's so brute force that we don't have the, the time afforded to us to be able to get in there and do all that kind of stuff. I, yes, I, I think absolutely. there's there's a huge procedural element that's going to be growing over the next uh, 10 years. I'm so happy where, you said that because when I'm sure you would you would have been around, but I'm not sure how deep into like um, speculative video game coverage there is, but... When the PS3 and Xbox 360 launched, um, people were going into how that generation, or maybe the generation after inverted commas, would finally get into procedural generation of worlds. And I still yeah. think that is a long way. It is, it is the future. It is. I cannot wait, but it is a long way away. Duren, what, what were you going to say? Nothing? I was just going to say that... Um, no, I was just, just going to say, like, like I feel like one of the other big um, hurdles that um, content creation, uh, level design, and things like that are really being held back by is the polygon. Really, uh, like, I feel like I feel like I feel yep. like that that yeah, absolutely yeah because I mean every every gener- generation of hardware we're upping the number of polygons, upping the number of po- polygons. Yep, but. That's really all we're doing. Like, it's still all nothing but, you know, basically yeah, a bunch of triangles. The smoke, the smoke and mirrors that confuse people that are yeah. in, in the industry is that we say, you know, we, we've got all this power. We can push way more polygons. We can do all this kind of stuff. The problem is we're upping the fidelity of, you know, the main character and the area around you. And then we're forced to put everything in hallways. And once you start opening up the vistas and truly trying to, to create a world then you have to start pulling all that stuff back. Right. And most, and that cuts back to visual candy because now your character can't right. have 30,000 polygons in his face anymore. You know, that kind of thing. So, so it's well, like a matter now of as a, balance. Now, as a, as a level designer, like, um, I, I can't recall what, it's, what it was called offhand, um, but are you familiar with the, uh, the tech that's being worked on? It's like, it's like infinite something... Uh, right, where they're the not using polygons, floating point one, where they're just all points, right? There's like, well, it's not really floating point, but it's it's. it's I think I, I know what you're idea. talking about. I forgot yeah. what it's yeah. called. They, like, I know that like was, a, that was like a search, a search engine algorithm um, to like place the the different points um, to create the um, the environmental um, objects. It's basically, like atom based as opposed to like polygon based. Yeah, it's yeah. Really and so, like, are you are you familiar with that at all, Josh? 
Um, I've, I've heard several different, I mean, I've read articles on several different speculative models for, but yeah, polygons are not the future. I, no way, just these hollow, you know, pinatas running around <laughs> never made sense to well, me. Yeah. And, 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 you know, as a level designer, like something like that has to really, really, um, excite you. Cause I mean, that really just opens the doors for like limitless possibilities, like literally. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, you're, you're no longer con confined by the hardware anymore. Like you can, you can just literally do exactly what you want. Well, to a certain extent, we've still got issues with artificial intelligence and animation, and, and there's well, well, true, true, true. absolutely. I, I just mean in terms of like, like actual um, level design itself. Yeah. Have you guys looked into yeah. how to read it? And, and we can make Lord of the Rings sets that you can explore. You know, yeah, that will okay. be. Okay, nice I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> at, at arena have you guys looked into procedural generation of environments and that kind of stuff like how do you how far away do you think that is i'm not sure I, after we finished prophecies i pitched um a new engine that was procedurally based uh based on the book uh infinite game universe which it's got to be about 15 years old now but i yeah, i'm still convinced true. i'm not a programmer so yeah, my view <laughs> Uh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm still think that a lot of those precepts are are very plausible. Right. Um, the the problem is our industry is so R and D phobic, mm -hmm. um, so nearsighted. You know, we're not like the auto industry that has entire buildings dedicated to building R and D cars that will never be produced. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, so that's a huge problem for us, and. Uh, it's it's something that only either very small scrappy startup people are doing or um at some point some big publisher is gonna be brave enough to sink you know hundreds of millions of dollars into it and make it work but i haven't i was, seen I was gonna ever. say it sounds like something crazy enough like that you might be like it be talked about at like valve or like john carmack goes up like, i'm gonna make a procedural engine and then just just, just, just <laughs> yeah. down they go come at me bro and just it takes someone big or someone ballsy to do it, but I can't wait. Right. So, so the, but I know, feel like it's too big of an investment. People would yeah. be very in, in scared the film to industry, risk it. There's going to be some some eccentric billionaire filmmaker who <laughs> makes a word for word adaptation of a book. Yep. In the game industry is going to be some eccentric billionaire game designer who makes a procedural <laughs> right. uh, Peter Molyneux. Peter call. Molyneux. There we go. That's what's in the cube. <laughs> it's the code for the procedural world. I said it. Oh said no! It. I click on that. <laughs> oh man! Oh now I got to get get my phone out and start tapping. <laughs> oh, this is gonna go a bad place. Anyway, I guess we can transition to questions now. Oh, is there anything else been you, you've been doing, Josh? Have, have you been playing any games? Oh yeah, of course. What have you been playing? playing uh, let's see. The last thing. Okay, actually, this is embarrassing, but I've never in my life got around to Bioshock. So I've been playing. Bioshock oh jeez. Oh wow! Oh, yes, Man. that's my winter project too. I need to play Bioshock. I haven't played it yet either. Oh, see, he's in like this the, the only place in the world surrounded by people who haven't played Bioshock. <laughs> I've, I've, played played Bioshock. I've played Bioshock. I played it. Like, I've played like the first maybe three four hours of Bioshock. I, I've read. Yeah, I've read like the world exclusive review by PC Gamer when it came out on PC <laughs> Gamer magazine in two thousand seven. <laughs> like that counts. As a level designer, you must love Bioshock. You have to love it. Because that, that is that that's what that game succeeds at, in my opinion, above all else. Is that is the, the best character in the game, the world? I'd, I'd say so, Josh. Yeah, yeah. That that's you know, that's one of the reasons I felt guilty for having not played it. It's one of those constantly referenced things amongst games designers and yeah. artists. And is is there like anything you see in there? You're like, oh, I wish I'd thought of that at all. Uh, I think most of the stuff has been ripped off by <laughs> everyone else so many times. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, I never saw Blade Runner growing up. So when I went back and saw it in my mid-20s, I was just underwhelmed. Uh. And it's unfortunate because, you know, Fifth Element did the same thing but a million times. I'm speaking, sorry, I'm speaking strictly visually here. Okay. <laughs> Fifth Element is exactly the same city with the verisimilitude and the lights and the this and the that. And so going back to that, it just seemed kind of small and dinky and hokey. And, you know, I, and that's, I, that's really sad, but it's... Blade Brother grew on me. I, 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 I oh, agree I love, with you I the Runner. first time yeah. I watched it. 
but then I've gone back a couple of years later and watched it again, and I, there's still some stuff it does. Like it's it's because it's it encapsulates that vision of the future rather than like the modern ones. So you have the um, so everyone smokes in Blade Runner. That's like the, the thing yeah. I always point to. And you don't see that nowadays. Nowadays, the future is so clean. The Japanese who took over the world in that one, right? I think so. Or the Chinese. It might have been the Japanese. I can't tell. I, I, I think Japan good. was the big was the big runner in the eighties because yeah. all the electronics made there. Bef- yeah, yeah like, before I'm the pretty sure there's a the scene where he sits down. Japan was like in the top. They were yeah. They were what like, was I'm pretty sure there's a scene Virgins where Imperial has Japan sits down and has a beef bowl. So I'm gonna go with Japan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's. I told, so you've been playing Bioshock. Do you like the game, or do you, do you play games for the art or the game nowadays? Oh, it's both. Okay, I, I've always been a gamer, so I just and so there you go. So well, so you've been playing Bioshock. How do you like it? Oh, I love it. It's great. Awesome. What else have you been playing? Uh, let's see. I just got The Witcher Two on that Steam sale. Oh, <laughs> good decision. That thing is a is a pile of bugs, but uh, <laughs> it, it's pretty fun. <laughs> cool. Wait, so do you do you perceive what what's what's your main? So there's there's many places that make video games, but I think there's like three types of game that have kind of like surfaced in the modern zeitgeist. It would be the US game, and you can and you can definitely see the difference between them. The US game, the Eastern Bloc game, and the Japanese game. That, that's at least how I see the art styles, the gameplay, the menu systems, and that kind of stuff that, that revolves around these. What's your thought on The Witcher? Like, have you put enough time into it as like the difference between how they approach problems and solutions you guys in the US? Uh, let's see. So, so you would put that in the Easter block. I would. Eastern block category. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a major difference. I mean, the, the, to me, what I see is a relatively young studio. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of their UI decisions and stuff like that just strike me as young game studio. <laughs> Not so much. Well, you said you're playing Witcher 2, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Maddie, you should go back and look at Witcher 1. <laughs> oh. Which you think that's great, though. Bad. Woof. Yeah, I'm not saying anything is, is terrible. Or right. Well, no, no, no. Yeah. No, that's fine, yeah. It's just, you, you can kind of see these, just how the decisions are being made, and, and yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'd point a lot to, Because, sure, you can describe it to them being a young studio, but there's mistakes in there that have been repeated by so many games from that territory not that they're bad but if you look at um something like um christ what's the game that just re- recently went on sale for it right, went on free if you signed up to the facebook page was oh, metro, metro 2033 oh, oh, yeah, yeah. but that's a great game i played it today. they're both great it's games good. like witcher and metro are fantastic games but you can definitely well, see some both, equivalency between their both like, hardware design. just destroyers both of them yeah oh, stalker from that same company th- um no stalker is um what is it called fuck uh gsc that's but stalker, stalker is, is a similar style um, it's very similar, but to Metro, yeah. Stalker's so much more broken than Metro. Because <laughs> <laughs> me, because at least Metro at the backing of a Western publisher, Stalker did not. Yeah. yeah. If I recall, they were. I mean, Shadow of Chernobyl was was also THQ, but their later games was like companies like Deep Silver that were European publishers, so it got real weird. But yeah, no, I, I just I just wanted to hear that you you signing off on that. Have you played many Japanese games? Like you had to because you're. You gamed in the eighties, I assume. Oh yeah, I, I I was going to learn Japanese so that I could be a tester at Nintendo as my dream as a child. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh nice. I, I wonder how many people a, have that dream. <laughs> I have a I have a page, uh, a whole page in Nintendo Power of my artwork when I was I think fourteen. Um, oh wow. Oh, oh that, so you must have been. I, I can't imagine as a fourteen-year-old seeing your stuff published in Nintendo Power. You, you, oh, oh my god, didn't come true. <laughs> yeah, did I pretty much set your path? You, you looked at that as like, I want to do that again. I want my stuff to be shown in magazines. Yeah, it was, it was, it was cool for sure. Um, what a really funny thing that really pleases me today is I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago. Um, have you guys heard of Sean Baby? I have not. Um, no, he's, he's a, he's a game journalist, but he had his own sure. website for a while, but. If, if you look him up, uh, look up uh, Dear Nintendo, My Life is a Goddamn Mess. I think and I've heard of that. <laughs> there. He, he goes through old Nintendo powers and he, 
he scans them in, puts them up there, and then puts his commentary underneath them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's cool. He got in a little in a little tip with a with a, a plumber who dressed as Mario. I think his name may have actually been Mario too. <laughs> um, but, you know, he was in Nintendo Power, and then Sean Baby posted his scathing, you know, critique of it, and then. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you know, and then uh, it was this big back and forth fight. It's pretty hilarious. It's worth checking out. Have you ever done cosplay? I, I just this is a random question. Have you ever done uh, cosplay? I'm doing it recently, but not for the purpose of hanging out with other cosplayers. I've been doing it. <laughs> not not. <laughs> not I feel like you're almost not to cost down. I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I totally admire the skills involved in creating cosplay since I started doing it myself. So what I'm doing is I'm working on this video project about story and video games. Sure. And it's going to be a sprawling six-part miniseries. Uh, and uh, I'm speaking to keep it interesting so it's not just a dry reading of basically a thesis paper. Right? <laughs> yep. I've, I've dressed up as different characters, gone to all these different cool locations, and I'm delivering the lines as Link and as... John Marston is like a space marine guy, you know, so. Oh, cool. Building costumes, yeah. So, I, I, we, are, we, are, we are pretty over time, but I still want to hear, how, how is your foray being into cosplay? Do, do you think you would cosplay in the future? I, I'm not even interested in cosplay, I just want to know. <laughs> Because it's like one of those drugs. I've heard it's a drug. I've heard when people start doing that kind of stuff. Like once you start doing cosplay, you just never go back. Yeah, I've heard that. I can stop wake, anytime. You wake I up in the morning. You wake up in the morning dressed up as Link, and then you just don't know why. But it's oh. not even that. It's like uh, my, the creation of the stuff. If I understand it correctly, it's like there's there's a whole community aspect to it that I haven't been involved with at all. So and you I mean, don't. aside from being <laughs> at E3 or PAX or whatever, and seeing people in costume, but well, like. Um, where I go to school um, here in New Jersey, our school hosts uh, in the spring, I think it's technically the second largest anime convention on the East Coast because I go crap, to an engineering right. school and everyone's Sakura in anime. Con? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, there, there's, there's the one at, at New York City Comic Con that's attached with that and then there's the one on campus at my school and I see just, you know, one random Saturday, I'll forget that it's that weekend. I'll wake up, look outside my window and there'll just be people dressed up like cloud just walking down the street <laughs> and I'll be super confused. I, I wish every day, I wish I had that every day of my life because that would be the most crazy, <laughs> the craziest thing. I guess you should go to PAX Australia then. Oh, shut up. I don't know about, I don't know. I kind of want to. I anyway. have my PAX East tickets. You gotta go. That's like the only chance you'll experience PAX outside of... We'll be the only Guild Wars 2 podcast year. PAX Australia. (laughs) Um, Reserve us a panel. To me, like the interesting part... I'll just say, to to cap off that segment, that I'm super glad that there are people who cosplay. (laughs) (laughs) This is what... He does not hate cosplayers. Josh Roberts does not hate cosplayers. Well, no, I will say, like, some people that do it and do it well... Like they fucking pull it off. Like oh, I've yeah, seen absolutely. some amazing. Well, but bad here. cosplay. I don't know. Oh, I know. The, like the, well, the crazy going, example. Going back, going the bad cosplay is shocked. almost as good. Exactly. The crazy example is the chick with I think the bio bad shock. cosplay is just lack of effort cosplay, or just I don't know. Well, e- kind of either way, it. there's people that are enthusiastic enough about a piece of culture that they're you know they're going to change themselves into it. I mean, for someone who creates pieces of culture that people are excited about. It's it's very heartwarming, you know. It's it's cool. So if someone dressed up as the lion's art statue, you just squee. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I can come up. Wait, what <laughs> lion's art statue? There's no and statue in the of lion's art. I don't know what <laughs> you're talking about. And explode. What a segue. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> oh yeah, Guild Wars Two. That thing I've completely forgot. So yeah, I, I guess welcome to a normal episode of the Linky Cast. Um, so I get. We we split up the questions. Uh, we've we've gotten questions from the community. Well, Duran, can you explain? And Thurbleton, I guess Thurbleton, you, you kind of organized most of it. What what we're doing here? Who? The, we've got questions, right? We didn't write all of these. No, these are all from our. Uh, so not, yeah, these are these are all questions taken from the uh, the Giant Bomb community. Um, right. I believe all of these guys are are guild members. I I can't necessarily verify that. Um, <laughs> I don't remember. Whatever. Well, because they use different names in game and in out and yep. everything else. But yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but we actually got some some a really good set of questions from them. Um, yeah, I, w- I was surprised how good they were actually. 
I, I, honestly, I was too because I, <laughs> I in this community. So we'll start uh, off with Nibirama. Um Right. You, just go ahead. So, okay. Fuck Death asks, how did you Bucket break death. into the video game industry? What? Bucket Death. What did I do wrong? You, you called him Bucket Death. Did I say Buck Death? I, I, think it was, I think Skype was messing up. Oh, or whatever. okay. Bucket Death asks, how did you break into the video game industry? Way to ruin the flow of that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I like ruining your flow. And, and, and now you can't even edit it together nicely because you mentioned how... <laughs> no, no, I, I right, really exactly. like ruining New Brown's flow. You actually edit this thing. If you say yeah, anything to Noob, it. yeah, if you say anything to Noob, he just stops and just stares. And like, like a deer in headlights. <laughs> he's, just, he's just like, he, he, he rehearses in his head how to do stuff. Now, if you stop me in any way, shape, or form, he just, like, freezes and completely fucks. Anyway. That's okay, you, so how I broke into the industry was <laughs> I got a job at uh, Humongous Games, the famous creators of Pajama Sam and Putt Putt. Yeah. Putt Putt. <laughs> I didn't Wait, work on any of those cool ones. Uh, I worked on Jim and Becky Brightly's Big Thinker series. <laughs> Woo! In first grade. <laughs> It was horrible. Wasn't well, speaking speaking of Arena Net and Humongous Games, wasn't Jeremy sold the composer for a lot of those putt putt games? Oh, At least I, I think he was. I, I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. There you go. Yeah, I'm just sure. sure. But Jeremy Soul does putt 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 great. I'm there. Oh, check check Wikipedia. It is there. If oh. someone edited that in, kudos to them because that's really funny. <laughs> but if it's true. <laughs> If it's true, like, it's probably equally time characters started out on commercials and stuff, right? So yeah, that's a good point. There you go. So yeah, you worked uh, with them. So you, were you a level designer or an artist there, or I was a uh, our ink and paint is what they called our department. It was basically a sweatshop where they had twenty people <laughs> packing through the room, shoulder to shoulder, oh. poking pixels all day. Where they they'd scan in the hand drawn stuff, and then we had to go do the the pixel art over it. So this is this is crazy for me because like, if you worked on the on um, the the, the putt putt games, I've been playing your game since I was a, a, a young child. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's crazy. Well, I'm very very old. And your paths <laughs> have finally met. It uh, was destiny. Yep, it's all full uh, circle. So yeah, so how did you get hired was, by them? What was your? Did you know someone there, or what were you doing? connections in the I, I don't think I knew anyone there I think you know I graduated from the art institute I had my portfolio I sent it to every game company in the universe and <laughs> you know and you got picked up I came with. and magic happened right so maybe right, that, that, okay, yeah, so answers I guess, that question I maybe guess right? this leads on segues on into my next question well, which I think, I I think we covered some, the next one sure did we I don't know. did we oh no well we've we've, we've covered like what where he's worked at but oh yeah but continue right so so again, my flow is ruined. What type of work <laughs> did you do while working at THQ Parallax and Outrage or well slash no Parallax, no Parallax, but go on. Parallax, no Parallax. Well, no, it no was Parallax. there was a company called Parallax. You guys were talking about something else. Parallax oh, no, was Paradox. Company. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I, f- I fixed that for you. There we go. So, was, so, so Parallax Thank made Descent one and two. They split off into Outrage and Volition, sister companies. That eventually THQ bought both of them and then closed down Outrage, which is where I was. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> uh, I guess I guess what the question is more so like, is were you did you just make like maps and, and zones and levels, or did you ever do like model work? Did you ever like do, you you said you have a bit of programming knowledge, but did you ever do any of it? No, no, I said I don't have any. No, I'm <laughs> well, anti- read books every- on programming <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> it's not. But so, no, you know, there's a C and like a plus and a minus thing. or something. <laughs> as far as I know, they sit there tapping ones and zeros. As Okai just works out, I can confirm that is the case. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, punch cards. Yeah, I've, right? I've done I've done everything in art in games. So I've done some animation, some textures, some modeling, some sculpting, some effects, oh, cool. all that stuff. So, so I, I started a little bit on Descent Three doing. I did all the textures for that game. Back when we were making massive 128 by 128 textures. <laughs> oh, man. And, uh, what was really cool was our programmer uh, figured out a way that we can get 256 textures in there, but it was only when you had, you know, the greatest of the great video cards. <laughs> so there's some hack out there somewhere where you can see the glorious 256 res version. Oh, man. Uh, um, and, and from there, I started doing some uh, multiplayer levels. And then for the add on pack, I got to do a huge 
level that broke all the rules, had too many rooms and too many lights and too many everything. Nice. <laughs> I've been doing that ever since. The best kind of map. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of what you could do with that few pixels. Okay. Cause all right. Yeah. So Diablo two, you, sometimes there'd be a texture with like a little like skeleton in it. Like it's right. like a fully yeah. formed skeleton. Like, could you do that? Like, what could you do with that few pixels? That's crazy. I don't know. Uh, 128 by 128? Yeah. Um, well, it depends on how much area it's covering. Right. Sure. Yeah, it, That's true. It, it was covering the equivalent of about 20 feet. But... <laughs> so. Oh, no. Wow. That's, that's a large area. I'm just looking up at this wall and just imagining just <laughs> not that many blocks. Uh, what, what, I, what I typically did was I, what I would build out, uh, I would model out a you know a panel with bolts and you know, wires and all that kind of stuff. I would render that and then I would scale that down oh, to yeah. the size. Sure, that, that, yeah. that makes far more sense. But I, I was going to say, like, is that really limiting? That like, do you miss that? Because with the rise of indie development and stuff, and people going back to essentially eight bit right. inverted commas gaming, um, yeah. how, how do you feel about that? Would you would you want to go back to try to try and work on some two fifty six sweet two fifty six by two fifty six textures? Because it's now it's like own art form now. Yeah, it's like yeah, beautiful. pixel art's like its own. Yeah, it really stuff. is. So. Uh, it's funny you bring it up. the The project I'm working on now, which I totally can't talk about, um, <laughs> and you'll have to invite me back when it's done. Absolutely, uh, is very much in that spirit. So, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's okay, right on. Interesting. So, I guess we should move on to the next question. I guess. Yeah. So, I guess this is more in line with Guild Wars because next question is. What kind of work did you do in the original Guild Wars? So, like, you were desi- you're designing events for Guild Wars Two. Have you designed events for the original Guild Wars holidays? Um, I I, I think I did art for them. I wasn't hmm. doing much designing back then. Right. Right. Hmm. Um, so, what I, might I be like specific did, examples? I, okay, I remember now. I did, I did the mushroom ring right for for Halloween. Oh wow! Okay. And, wow. Uh, Anytime Lion's Arch changed, I went in and added all that stuff. That, those are actually probably so like, some of my favorite so, things so. ever. When Lion's Arch changed, because that was the city. Oh. Like I, when <laughs> yeah, I logged into Guild Wars like, One, okay, it's a new, it's the new holiday. Lion's Arch changed. What, what's, what's there to see? It's like let's see, it's either in the middle of LA is the giant cauldron, or if it's the Christmas tree, or what have you. <laughs> it's well, I was just no, it's live right now, right? What? We, oh, we yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It would oh, be. Yeah. Totally when this is. goes out. Yeah. It would totally be. But this goes out. It, it's been out for a couple of weeks now. Wink, wink. Yeah. Well, yeah. Of course, Guild Wars 1. <laughs> so, but also, also in our time, in the past, it yeah. is out right now, as far as I know. Right. Is it really? Is it? Is it? Okay. Oh, yeah. No way. Okay. Well, I, yeah, I, the, I, the patch notes The patch notes went live right before we right. started recording. All right. Shin Boy, Shin Boy, you're not thinking fourth dimensionally, Marty. <laughs> so outside oh, of holiday event, one of my Christmas airship, I made this whole uh, miniature village for you guys to smash. Oh, oh wow! Awesome. Oh man! Oh man! Oh, so I, 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 of, actually, I saw I saw some. Uh, I think it was concept art of that that um, airship, and god damn, that thing is amazing looking. <laughs> that looks pretty. It does look pretty cool. So outside of holiday events, um, what did you design in the original Guild Wars? Like specific. Areas. Uh, so he's pretty, one or two? I, I actually kind of want to uh, hear Guild about Wars both. One. Both. Right. Both. Well, both. I think. I think. Well, I think, one. He's, I think yeah, what yeah. he's asking is like, like uh, you mentioned the uh, the Lion Fountain in Lions yeah. Arch. Is there anything like equivalent to that that you did in the first game? Like, I think maybe, it's like this is my favorite thing. It's like I'm really proud of making this in Guild Wars One. It's like your. That's, your, that's honestly that's going back seven years. I, <laughs> <laughs> That's that uh, is a good answer. Like a couple months ago for me. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> but so let's move, move on to Guild Wars Two. Like, what, what would, what's your what's the thing you point to in Guild Wars Two so far that you'd say, yeah, that's me. I love what I did there. Uh, I, I'd say it was pretty much the last thing I did before we shipped was the Shark Mock Caverns uh, jumping puzzle, and that was a blast because. Um, I got to design it from the ground up. I built all the props. I animated the pirate ghost swirling around. I wrote all the dialogue for it. Did you do the voice? I, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Size of disappointment from everyone. But it's actually cool because, uh, you know, co has been doing voiceovers. I, I think he was an original Saturday Night Live cast member back in 75 or whatever. Oh, wow. Holy crap. And, uh, 
but he's he's just so good at, at improv and stuff like that. You know, the, the whole last line where he's talking about all his ex-wives, you know, I wrote out 12 ex-wives <laughs> and you know, it's mostly my wife and co-workers' wives and stuff. And, you know, <laughs> the, the part where he has Heather drowning and he's simulating the storm and it was, yeah, it was just brilliant. I never would have thought of that. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. great. That's so it, right on. So there you go. So I guess we can move on to Duran's questions. Um, these yeah, are more uh, industry y, but yeah, let's go. Yeah, uh, Dark Lord Spam asked, uh, what sort of interactions uh, do you have with the, other, with the level designers? In other words, like, what's the split between decorating with set pieces um, after the environment's been built versus the designers being encouraged to highlight existing models and translate them to concept art? Hmm. I'm not sure I follow that question exactly. The, the concept art thing's throwing me off. So it, basically what it is, is the, the process is you get a, a basic layout of the map, which is just completely, you know, a gray scale. Here's a mountain, here's a valley sort of thing, play okay. area thing. So, so then we all get together and we have brainstorming with multiple designers and we all just throw out every idea we can think of. And then the designers go off and think about how can we actually implement this given the tools we have or they get new tools made. And then we come back and we kind of have a more settled uh, direction. That's when I start arting the map. That's where I'm putting in houses and trees and roads and all that kind of stuff. And oh, wow. okay. kind of at the same time, the designers are building their events and stuff throughout the world. And so there's... A, there's a lot of, we have to work very closely. Like every day we're talking to each other about, you know, can, can you push this cliff back 20 feet so I can put a camp here? <laughs> or, you know, I've created this cool little vista. Can you put something interesting there? You know, and, and so there's a lot of give and take that way. So okay, the last I was going to ask, I was, okay. was going to ask, do you design the environments around the events or the events around, designed around the environments or is it a bit of both? Yeah, it's really both. It's, it's a lot of back and forth. Okay. So the last part of this question was... um, It it can get really rigid if you start with one thing and say, we're seeing this through to the end. It becomes rigid and becomes hierarchical. Right. And we try to do that if we can. (laughs) Yeah. Makes sense. Well, is there any example of that? I don't know. I think, like, off the top of my head, I guess, like, the Shatterer fight would kind of have to be that way, wouldn't it? Because that whole area is, like, built for the Shatterer fight. Yeah, I mean, because because both the artist and the designer have come together and said, what cool things do we want to happen here? Right. And so they're both kind of going down the same road at the same time. Right, exactly. But yeah, so the second part of this question was, um, and, and, and why I'm excited about it is because I've always wanted to ask about this. Um, how much are you encouraged to translate the concept art into the world? So specifically in my mind, I'm thinking of the um, ships of the Kodan. So... Mm-hmm. Like, how much of that was like, okay, you, it was like an empty landscape with water and you're like, I want to put a ship of the code down there. Or was it more like, okay, we want as a group to put like, have an event. If I recall, there wasn't even water and they liked the design so much. Or like they, they like the art so much is like, how can we make this work? If, yeah, if, it was, we have, it, it's kind of a meritocracy here where any great idea coming from any direction, people will kind of gather around that and support it. So right. in, in, that, in the case of the Coden ship specifically, Daniel Darchu, our art director, just made this thing out of nowhere and was like, hey, look how cool <laughs> this is. And so the writers and the designers and the artists all said, okay, how can we make this happen? And, and that's how it happened. That's how the whole race of the Coden came about. So aside from that, are there any, like, would you say that there was concept art you saw, like, just, just on your own rights and said, okay, I want to translate this into the game? Or are you particularly, like pushed in that direction or is it more of like everyone's like hey we should do that or hey we should do this it it's it's a lot of a lot of things it's it's the process is very organic and it bubbly i guess i would describe <laughs> it as like lots of people kind of, uh, okay so so here's a specific example was the um i wanted to make just a hidden little area uh i was i was working on regrown let's see I got to think of the real name, not the developer name. Okay, <laughs> the, the SF Plastic. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yes, yep. And, okay. Um, I'm really curious what the developer name of that is now. <laughs> what is the developer name for the SF Plateau? Tell me. We go on range. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Oh. Right. Ooh, so, cool. yeah, listeners, you, you didn't hear that. Started out is like this is the cattle ranch area. You know, this is their <laughs> their range area. Right. So anyway, you know, I got tired of all the open rolling hills and the industrial and all that kind of stuff, and 
just in my mind, I was thinking, how can I put... Did you slap in- that tower there? I did put the tower there. Yes! But that's not how... I <laughs> oh. had to launch you up there through the cattle launcher, too. Oh, wow. But, um, <laughs> Five. So, the, so I, I wanted... Okay, th- this was just an artistic impulse to say, how can I counterbalance this in some way? So I thought, what's the opposite of the open and the industrial and the, you know, and, and so that I made this little secret strawberry garden that's kind of, re, it, the, the theme is it's a reclaiming of the, of the industrial cast-offs from the char. So it's all these moldy, mossy gears. And, uh, you know, I actually took some of the gears and shrunk them way down and put candles on them. So I made it this little sanctuary with a babbling brook and waterfalls and butterflies. And you have to find it by climbing through this little circuitous pipe um, oh, wow. and there's a girl cub who's growing her strawberry patch and so that that's that's one of the ways that sounds that so awesome. <laughs> i haven't seen that of, that's the crazy thing i'm like oh wow way too much of this game See, and i, I no tried to show is. you those things but you said you hate jumping puzzles. i do hate jumping puzzles <laughs> and, <laughs> but i do want to give you props because that is one of the most just like serene pictures as soon as you climb out it's you do a really good job of showing the art with the right camera angle as, as the people are like getting uh, into the room. Thanks. Yeah. That, that's, that's always a challenge in a three dimensional environment is how do you get the player to look the direction you want them to look and that sort of thing. Awesome. Yeah. That, that was a fantastic. I, I, so for listeners out there, Hey, so search through the SEO plateau. Um, it's, very southwest. It's in the gear. You're not, supposed to, you're not supposed to tell them that. You 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 just ruined <laughs> everything. <laughs> now we have to now we have to bleep that out. Oh. Uh, but no, where was it? Southwest was it? Yeah, it's it's right, it's, 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 it's of, right out of uh, Black Citadel. Oh, cool. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, okay. I know exactly where that is then. Yep. Durin, next question. Yeah, next question is, um, what typical restrictions are placed on you in terms of scale, spatial availability, and animation budget? Like, Do you find that these limits have um, either positive or negative impact on the final product? Uh, well, it's both. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. No, so, because Gear Ge- Ge- Wars 2 runs on pretty much everything, right? But at the same time, like, there's, to some extent, you can't go absolutely crazy with it. So how much, like, an- no. so animation budget is, like, specifically the thing here I, I, I find really interesting how much are you guys giving one? Like how, how do you, what's, what's your boundaries? Where can you work with it? What we tend to run up against the most is not animation budget. It's uh, draw calls and poly counts, which affect the, the frame rate overall. Right. So that's, that, that's our biggest headache and biggest squasher of dreams. But uh, <laughs> as far as getting the, the, the resources, again, it comes down to the merit of your idea. If it's something that's compelling to people, especially now that the way we restructured the company, uh, I guess I shouldn't call it a restructuring. That sounds scary. But the, the way we... Uh, Purging? Purging? Than, <laughs> well, witch hunt. The know, witch hunt. <laughs> a block of a programmer, a block of artists, and a block of designers is we've got all these little mini teams now. We had, I was on the holiday team up until recently, and we did the Halloween and the Christmas. I mean, right. Holiday. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> Some people don't celebrate Halloween. Me. <laughs> and so, um, and, and so now it, it looks like the project that I'm working on currently, which I can't talk about, mm-hmm. is it was an idea that I had that I just told to a couple people and they got really excited about it. And so I told it to more people and eventually I got the, the specific team members from design and, and animation uh, that really would help bring this about. And just because the idea was compelling, uh, a lot of people got behind it. So now it's becoming a reality. So it, it's, That's it's really a cool. really neat process and it's, it's cool the way that, it's not perfect, but it's neat the way things are working now. Right. And it's like some of the like other parts of this question are really interesting. Well, like for example, um, if you want to make a new landmass, like could you, or would it would have to be because it would be an enti- a company wide affair, wouldn't it? Because things like yeah. adding large amounts of space would be really difficult. And how much of that? Yeah, is, new like, landmass, like the one, like one to the south with a city and a, maybe a sea made of jade. I don't know. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! Wink. That's for later. No, it's for later. <laughs> um, <laughs> Now the the Jade Sea, I think, was one of my favorite concepts from. I think it's much everyone's one of everyone's favorite concepts. Yeah. It is so yeah, awesome. I would, love, I would love to see what we could do with that. Well, actually, one of the 
one of the fractals. Is, right, the Jade yes. Maw fractal, yeah. 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 I didn't get to work on that one, but, oh, I'd love to do a Jade C again. It's very, like, Lovecraftian and, like, Cthulhu-ish, that Jade Maw one. It's yeah, really yes. interesting. I don't, I, there's just something about the color of that. Anyway, I, and same with the Kurzic Forest. I forgot what it was called. Um, the Echovald Forest, Echovald I Forest, yeah. That, I, like that. I love pretty much... The Canthal was awesome. It's just Canthal was awesome, guys. Did, did you work on Kanang at all? Like oh. the extended city that was Kanang? Oh yeah, that is oh, lots of cities. Yeah, that it's one of the very few cities I've seen in a video game. Like even today. Right. So, like when you worked on the environment for Kanang, did you like imagine it as like a very dense, polluted city with like lots of slums? Was that like the look you were going for? Yeah, I, I, that one again was driven a lot by Daniel um, and his concept work. Right. And he was inspired by a particular set of photos of some slums in uh, either Hong Kong or China, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so we were definitely following that. And a lot of it was brought about, a lot of the, the look, the claustrophobia and stuff was a result of our limitations. You know, you just draw distance and poly count and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So right. yeah, that's a perfect example of how limitations totally made that place look amazing. Because having the small, like small corridors... Like that, that yeah. that's a thing. I liked that. It, it was and especially like back like, alleys and stuff yeah. like that. It's really interesting. And it's great yeah, because I, I love getting in there and putting all the little lived in, you know, the rocking chair and the crumpled up paper and you yeah, know, that kind of stuff. just the debris. Yeah, I'd, I'd still like today till today. I'd probably say that the like Cantho is probably my favorite region in in the right. Guild Wars universe. Like, there's everything about. I that. think I think it's very true to like asian towns of the past where it's never like mm -hmm. big roads it's more like very small back alleys yeah. and it's like clustered up houses made out of whatever they could find and even beyond and like think, there's just like the fact that you have that yeah. and then you go slightly south and then you have the jade sea which yeah, is like this two, like huge different contrasting areas just crazy yeah. anyway, anyway what have i done i turned this into just a faction <laughs> talk <laughs> it's, it's the best kind of talk what are you talking absolutely about? but so going like rewinding to the question who's the one who makes the call on hey we want to add a bunch of new space like and we want to filter about in this way or like is there is like a company directive like hey we need a new landmass to make people interested or is it more like the level designers are like hey we want to do something new we have this great idea uh, like i said it comes from different directions at different times mm -hmm. uh, i'm not sure whose idea was specifically to do you know the karka island thing yeah, um, yeah. I, I know that you know we we're split into teams and said hey we want something epic for november so mm -hmm. you're the November event team. Right. Uh, make something epic. And that right. was the idea that they came up with and ran with it. So Cool. Awesome. Duran, next question. Yeah. Uh, next question is, uh, which of the races or factions or regions did you enjoy creating assets for the most? Mm. Humans. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you? I mean, Lion's Arch is definitely my baby. I, I love that place so much. Um, Wait a second. I mean, how, how much of Lion's Arch did you do? Because th that's a big call. Because I'm not sure if you, you probably haven't listened for... to this podcast before. But before the game released, and pretty much every time thereafter, we, we've always been huge Lion's, uh, not Lion's Arch, um, Divinity's Reach fanboys specifically. Um, Human, but, humanists, like Cerberus. But, no. <laughs> but second anyway, place was, was Lion's Arch. Uh, last 10 seconds dropped for me. Oh, but yeah, oh. so... Human fanboys. We are human fanboys. <laughs> you guys So are. we're all about Divinity's Reach. Um, but Lion's Arch for me has been like a close second. Um, so how much of that have, did you... Like how much of those did you work on? Like you call it your baby. What does that mean? Okay, so all, none of us gets a map from start to finish all the way. Right. Right. Um, yep. I got it for the last year of development. So the, the basic kind of downtown area was, was roughed in and everywhere else around, you know, 90% of the map was pretty much blank. So it was a big blank canvas to, to play with and that was just super fun. So I, I think probably why I consider it my baby more than other maps is because I got so much creative freedom to play around there. What's your favorite part of it? I What's your favorite? Someone part asked of it, a question specifically. If you had oh, to point, are? yeah. Um. Well, I, I would say Shark Maw, just because of how much stuff I got. You know, creative freedom again. I got to mm -hmm. do in there. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I really like the the traders. Um, I forget what that ended up being called. I called it the pirate lair, but the, you know, <laughs> the, the cave in the northwest. 
Um, oh, well, okay, I, mean, yeah. I, I just okay, love yes. aliens and I love. Well, when I discovered that, I found that really cool. I I didn't expect to find something like that. Yeah, I actually I I went in and and sculpted out all those rock props because right. we didn't have any dripstone cave elements, and I just I really wanted that in our game. So awesome, right? Well, what I found most interesting about the home cities, especially, in, in, or I think especially Lion's Arch, is all of the things you can find, like these little nooks and crannies that you wouldn't really find in other home MMOs. Just like exploring is its own game, just exploring the main areas. Like, were you trying to go for that aspect where it's not really you're just there to sell your stuff, you're not there to go to merchants, it's more like another exploration thing like the rest of the game? Yeah, I, my my design aesthetic is exploration oriented. That's just what right. I love to do in games. So that was that I put. I, I think there's still probably a couple little nooks and crannies people haven't found yet. But, oh uh, man! And see, and I gotta say, like like mission accomplished because I'm not generally that way in games, and I have been pretty much anal about every zone I go into. I just hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, that's <great>. so. <laughs> Yeah, you have one convert. I, I'm still a stalwart. I just want to see what I want to see and then kind of move on. But you guys are all <laughs> you don't enjoy. You don't enjoy nice things. I'm, yeah, so I'm, okay. I, I have no heart yeah. or no soul. Um, but no, I, I did, like my favorite part of Lion's Arch was probably like the the jumpy puzzle with the ships. Is that, am I think? Am I remembering this correctly? The one where you're walking over the tops of those ships. Am I, am I being crazy here? Am I crazy? <laughs> Am I crazy? I'm, I'm trying to You're think. Probably I'm referring to the bridge. It's not actually a jumping puzzle. Oh but... yeah, yeah. The, the bridge made of well, shit. With him, it's a jumping puzzle. For oh, me, okay. because you have to walk upstairs <laughs> and stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> if you have to jump, that. it's a jumping puzzle for Cynic. Right. Yeah. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. you don't have to jump. It's, it's more like um, you have to go through the interior. Yeah, you you don't find you? your way. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That I know, is I know the one you're talking about. My favorite part of Lion's Arch, by far. But just just so like I'm being forced to do that. Be indoors and outdoors at almost the same time. And it's such an interesting environment. It's pretty cool. Right. I think the nice thing is nothing is really forced on you. You just have the option to do it. And a good option is Mm -hmm. to do it. Oh, my question would be... Uh, Go ahead. I I was going to say real quickly, like for for me, um, like you're talking about your favorite part of Lion's Arch being that. Like for me, my favorite part of Lion's Arch, as somebody who didn't play Guild Wars 1, and Mm -hmm. I I don't know what it looked like then compared to now, is actually just the aesthetic of it. I I, I love the... The look of this the it city looks built nothing on, like it didn't get worse on, one, which is right. awesome. Pirate it's, ships. it's pirates. That's the complete different thing. Well, I think. Well, but, yeah. but specifically, like the, the fact that like the, the the infrastructure of the city is just like these these ruined pirate ships that have been converted into yeah. buildings. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's that's just that's really really cool. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic idea and it's pulled off really well by the the people. So the the downtown area I was talking about that I inherited. That was created. We had a, a little kind of a strike team where um, it was half can- concept artist, half prop builder types. And they just throw stuff together, super sloppy, but they, they get the, <laughs> an, an idea out there, a very strong aesthetic. And then, sketch. and then us regular environment artists then get that and we have to make it actually work in the game, which gets kind of difficult, but right. it's worth it. Yep. Um, one question I had was, so for Cantha and things like that, you seem to have taken like real life influences. Did you have any real life influences designing the new Lion's Arch or was everything made up from ideas off of scratch? Well, I, I mean, there's no such thing as <laughs> an idea of scratch, right? I mean, every Right, yeah, well, I guess that's an everything. idea, right. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> well, I guess like, uh, well, like since they knew Lion's Arch was going to be this project, did like they say like, okay, let's get all the art, uh, artists and whatnot, go on a trip to the coast. And check out like a couple of old like old sailing ships that are docked at one of the ports. I mean, you guys do are are based near Seattle, um, so yeah, like, we don't have uh, you know art field trips like that. But most of us are always out there hiking and taking pictures just because we're passionate about it personally. Right. I, I personally have a reference library that's four um, full size bookshelves in my kitchen oh, that's grr. just packed. Whoa. Jeez. And of course, terabytes of reference images and stuff. But, you know, it's always great to have pictures of the real thing, even if it's just, I like the way the shadow is, is laying across this rock or these color, you know, this leaf color next to this bush, that sort of thing. It, yeah, pulling inspiration from the real world is very important. So my question was probably the last one to cap off this part of, this, of it, because we have to move on to the next question asker. You know what, Thurbleton? But yeah, my, my question would be, um, 
what part like were you gameplay driven in most of your design choices or was it more like you built the place you wanted to build and then found elements of it that would be fun like for, i'm thinking specifically of the um diving board like the vista up there and that kind of stuff like that is awesome how much of that were you like okay this would be fun or <laughs> the story behind the diving board is kind of interesting because um i had been asking for a diving animation you know whatever <laughs> skill set for uh -huh. years and it, it was one of those ideas that a couple people were like yeah so it could be neat but it never really <laughs> caught on so when i got lion's arch i was like i'm gonna put the most inspiring diving board that's ever been created <laughs> and i'm just going to have to do it and it worked out that way so um, by, by the way, every time every time I introduce someone to Guild Wars 2, um, which should be a couple times now, but when I've like taken them through the world to some extent, and I show them either the diving board or like, there's some other places around the world where you can dive, um, and I show them the goggles that you can equip before you die, the first question I get is, can you take those and like run the other direction and then just use them throughout the world? Because <laughs> yeah. those diving animations are great. <laughs> I, I would love that, yeah. And I'm really looking forward to when we get uh, more diving uh, skills in there. But, um, but yeah, so how much are... Yeah, like, so, not, go ahead, sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, getting back to the, to the main question, I mean, different, you know, our department, or well, we have eight or nine environment artists, mm -hmm. right, that work, work in map edit that create the, the maps. And there's a wide range from ones who are, care very much about the art and the design is kind of, you know, I'll do what the designers tell me to do, but it's not really a core concern. Right. And I'm kind of on the other end of the spectrum where I'm very design-oriented and design-driven. I'm always thinking about end experience. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, obviously a big part of that experience is what you're seeing, yeah. but there's... There's the mechanics underneath that that to me, that to me are more um, exciting and drive my uh, the art. Right. Exactly. So 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 when you built the diving board, um, I don't know, aside from that, like when placing vistas, for example, vistas were pretty late on our end. Like we only found out about them pretty much just before launch. Um, right, but it they, was the last beta, wasn't it? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but that's still right before yeah. launch. Yeah, yeah like right before one, launch. Yeah. So. And from our end, it was like making the art and exploration into a gameplay element. Like, how right. did, yeah. were you like? Did you like celebrate when that happened, or was that like an idea that was festering for a long time? Or, uh, to be honest, when they first talked about it, I wasn't too thrilled. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just because I'm, I have a very strong stance against cinematics in general and taking control right. away from the play ever. Right. Right. Um, but having said that, uh, just playing the game as a player, you know, running around in the world, I, I think they're fantastic. Yeah. Um, just so, little little rewards, and I, I hate that a cutscene is a reward, but some <laughs> <laughs> I just have to deal with that. But so. from like a, a level design pers like perspective, where you like, okay, I'm gonna put a vista here, try to get to that. Ha! Or were you like? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, okay, so the vistas we were told should not be incredibly hard because not everyone uh, likes jumping puzzles. I don't, and but still. I, I, th I think the issue is more it's the actual concept. Like once you find how to get there, mm -hmm. it's very easy to do the whole jumping and the execution of it. The issue is, is like it's the difference between that and one of the like the more the mini dungeon jumping puzzles is you don't know about those per se. You happen to find the entrance and then go on your way. Right. You see that there's a vista there somewhere on the map, mm -hmm. yeah, and I have like circled a, a mountain. Why it's telling you you are a failure until you get here. So it's like, where is the <laughs> answer to this? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. So, and it just said, oh, said what he's saying is you are a failure. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. basically that that I've gone well, across. Like, at least, least ten hours have been put different. into vistas or points of interest at this point for me, and I've only played like what 150 hours of this game. Sorry, what was that, Josh? Great. Oh, I, I was just saying that that is the reason that we can't make them over the top difficult is because they are incorporated into completion right. and all that stuff. Right. Did you kind of want to? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. just, just as like, uh, <laughs> like completion should be hard. Like, the, the, I know there's one at the start of Shark Mall Caverns. Did you want to put it at the end? <laughs> uh, I, actually, I actually don't like making things incredibly hard. I like people. Right. I, I, 
Wait, wait, wait. wait. Okay, hang on a second. You made the jumping puzzle for the Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew it would come up. I knew it would come yeah, up. But, but let me explain that. So <laughs> I, I don't like making things hard, but I like pleasing people more. And I was told over and over and over by the community, both the beta community, testers, every, please make harder puzzles. Please right. make harder jumping sure all right this seems like a good time to do it (laughs) the problem with that is it's a vocal minority because i know i cannot stand minority i cannot stand jumping fossils let alone just because you're bad at them come on i will (sighs) just this this just seems like a good time um there is one question that we need to ask that wasn't listed on the questions oh yeah go and it was uh one of the players uh in the guild Uh, named riven is this gotcha journalism no no (laughs) one of the players this is a very this is very simple yes or no probably gonna be no one of the players, Riven, wants to know if you reimburse him for the $25 mouse that he threw and <laughs> broke while attempting your jumping puzzle. I'm so tempted to say yes, but I'm afraid there would be a <laughs> Yeah, because that, that would probably open a whole slew of like, I broke this right. while doing your puzzle. Exactly. Get from my medical my dog bills. Because- it, it was great, though, because he actually he, he threw it, broke it, had to go out and buy a new one. And came back uh, about the time that I got online. I think I ran it about three times and finished it and was waiting another hour and a half for him to finish. See, but the thing is, at least Revan finished it. I put in four hours without finishing it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> to his credit, he finished it. And I uh, also realized that one of the big things that you weren't, you didn't prepare for, you didn't even like realize it was going to be an issue was the addition of other players doing it. Oh, and man. for right. me, that was actually a boon because like there were, there were three or four people who were, you know, pretty proficient jumpers and we had to just work on strats because we only had so much time before what was that green stuff <laughs> I, I call it like candy ooze was it all it's the puke evil. That the people that's threw all up? you need to know get away from the evil okay <laughs> the evil consumed us but it's just like all right that didn't work let's try this strat and then when one of us would make it they would whisper back to the rest yeah go for that like it's this pathway and so that actually helped us out a lot. I think um, I think that doesn't help say you that, reinforce the hate of other races for me. Oh, yeah. Just it, well, it, it not, became, not if you're races. a bigger person than no. me, get out. <laughs> just just no. Yeah, I, I felt really bad about that. Um, that there there was a huge freak out moment when I found out we couldn't do it solo, and mm-hmm. and oh. then I was told uh, the minimum we could probably get away with is twenty players per match. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh no. It, if well, I, so you cut it down, actually, from what it originally for, was. For about a week, um, we only had five or six people to help test it at a time, and it, it wasn't right. so bad. And then once we finally got the full 20, it was like, it, it can't <laughs> <laughs> I think we finally got down to 12. Is that the number? I, uh, I believe 12 was the number, yeah. I think so like a really good compromise would be if like if there was a group of people, so it suffice the, the programming thing, but if they're all just like a ghost outfit. And so they were see through. Ooh, right. that's yeah, cool. We explored every different option of you know, but it happened so late and yeah. locked down. Or was like that, You know, can we go start? It, there were options we could have pursued, but we it was just a like a day or two too late. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have to say, for that jumping puzzle, the, probably the most genius part um, for for me had to have been the uh, the fall. Yeah. Oh yeah. That uh, pissed like, off like so many people. <laughs> Well, uh, um, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I purposely train the cool. players twice. You wait for the lightning and then you jump. And uh, yeah, that time you don't. Nice. I think I was one of the <laughs> who, who saw that fake chest and it's like, I know that's a fake one, but I want to get what's inside. And then that was like the <laughs> single time I ran the dun- or ran it. I'm like, I'm, oh, I can do this. I can do this. Oh my God, a chest. I have to go get that. And then I die. And then I never <laughs> got that far again. People who were able to get all, you know, the three chests on the way up. And finish it, and I can't even fathom that. What? <laughs> Hacks. Cheaters. Cheaters. Doubleton's there going. In the end. Doubleton's so <laughs> jelly. Doubleton is so jelly right now. Anyway, I, I, I did put some tweaks to the puzzle. They weren't able to get in during the Halloween event, but uh, if it if it's up next year, it should uh, alleviate a lot of those things. Cool. Anyway, so I think we should definitely we need to get moving. So who's next? Shinboy, things your questions. Uh, yeah, okay. If I didn't ask this one before this thing ended, I would not be able to live with myself. Um, is there any sort of like joking rivalry or like dislike between, say, the art team and like the event team? Because the event team seems to be fond of blowing things up, like they blew up your <laughs> fountain. Well, okay. So 
now that we're incorporated groups, um, where you know we're all kind of making decisions together. I'm, right. I mean, just just so to back up, spitting just, distance of each other. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that probably affects something. I mean, point, <laughs> point blank things with Nerf guns. <laughs> Uh, that was my idea. I, 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 that just had, like, a really epic entrance. So, yes. And everyone liked the idea. So. Okay, you sabotaged your own project. <laughs> False flag operation conspiracy. <laughs> so, so you're saying and, is uh, everyone's a surprisingly happy family over there? That's no fun. To a certain extent, That's yeah. No fun it's, a, it's a great work environment. I've worked at six game companies and this one is definitely a great one. Oh. I, I, oh, I didn't duh. want that I did not want that to go positive at the end. I was hoping for you to, <laughs> to go I hate you ex dude at a reason. Like just bleep out those names. I mean it, it, it's like any family, right? Where there's there's going to be little issues here and there. Um it, it the closest thing to a rivalry is some of the designers will get a little uh prop happy. <laughs> where they will place props in their <laughs> and they're never oriented right, and they, you know, they don't. They don't they uh, oh, that's it. all right. That's your That's like one of here. Yep. The other question was, um, you mentioned the little strawberry patch in uh, Diaz Plateau, and there's also um, the cat room in the jumping puzzle in the Borderlands, and all these other little hidden areas. Um, do you guys, when you do go on adding additional areas, do you plan on keeping those types of secrets there? And are there still ones out there in the world that you haven't seen anyone discover yet? Hmm. Uh, I assume by the cat room you're talking about uh, in the uh, Codicus Manor? No, no, no. In in the jumping puzzle in the Borderlands in Rovi World, there's like a little room where there's like a kid swinging on a tree and there's like a whole bunch of cats. Oh, that's Tirza's. Right, right. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad to hear someone found that. Um, yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure there's stuff that people haven't found. Uh, well, is, is there anything like that stuff. you know that you I made that so. no one's been found? Um, well, you can't reveal the secret. Well, not where it is, just if it's out there. <laughs> well, pe people, uh, I was talking about the, the Codicus Manor map, and people found a world out, and they were able to get to a, a piece of content that I had kind of done as a personal side project, and but it they didn't get to hook it up. I, there wasn't enough design time or whatever. So eventually it's going to get put in. But so it's just hanging out there in the map and someone found a way to, <laughs> over to it. <laughs> it may be very sad because looking at it from the outside, it looks like landed UFOs or something. <laughs> too bad. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, I mean, we, we love sprinkling little hidden stuff around. Uh, I, I would hope that there's still stuff people haven't found. But, right. um, and, but it's and hard to track in addition to that, we're we're always adding, you know, little things here and there. So, awesome. okay. so just start keep looking, a watchful guys. Start eye. looking right now. <laughs> <laughs> Stop listening to this podcast. Start yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that, that Jimbo, anything else you want to ask? Because you only had two. Is there, is there a third yeah. mystery? Third question. I just, I just really wanted to ask the first one about blowing things up. I was curious <laughs> whose idea that was. <laughs> third yeah, I, I like blowing. Actually, honestly, because we were on such a tight schedule, um, there was a lot of resistance to that idea, um, to having the, the the whole Mad King rising up, and you know we had to do a custom it, it was, for that. Well, as, as, as a follow up, um, it has the fountain hasn't been there since then. Are we going to see it again? There's like stuff like about to be built almost. There's yeah. like yeah, you know, like planks and stuff like that. It's very obvious. Yeah. So the the, the statue itself was. Uh, another one of my babies, right? So I was making Lion's Arch. I, I had this big central place where I knew a lot of people would gather, and I just wanted something epic and something that would reinforce the theme of the town and everything. And so I didn't really have time on my schedule for it, so it was kind of a free time thing that I just did probably over the course of about a year. Um, wow. And, I mean, that, that thing was... It, you wouldn't know it by looking at it, but the amount of resources that went into it... so. For instance, there are 4,000 frames of animation for all the water to splash from mouth to mouth oh, on the fish. Wow. Oh, oh, wow. 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 <laughs> By hand, I went and I had to write down every frame that every oh, splash touched every God. fish so the sound guys could hook that up appropriately. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh So, geez. yes, Lion will definitely be back. <laughs> here. I shall return. You heard it here first, guys. <laughs> Breaking news. We are Exclusive. <laughs> So, Thurbleton, your turn. 
what you got? Okay. Um, partially just because most of my questions have already been answered or just like added into uh, the previous questions. These are more just going to be just like shoot from the hip. Uh, they, uh, you, you can answer them easily. Uh, first one is just like, have you heard of Amnesia Fortnite? Uh, no. It's, it's something that another game company does, but um, the, the short version is they take uh, two weeks and stop whatever they're doing and like now it, i know what you're talking about yeah there okay you go. Double but like thing. basically it, it is do you guys like is uh, is that with a team like the breaking into teams and doing that or like is there one guy who's just always been working on like that's jim he's been working on char buildings for the past four years and hasn't done anything different <laughs> no we're all we always have things mixed up all the time um and and our team compositions keep changing you know i said i was on the holiday team for the last couple months yeah and now i'm on to a different project so we're constantly getting a lot of fresh blood new ideas into all the different things and and we're encouraged to um to take things that we're unsatisfied with in the current game for instance you know one guy is not a huge fan of the uh, dredge architecture or thinks it could be taken further so right. we have what we call base camp where we have a, a smattering of different disciplines in there where people are free to just say, I'm really passionate about this. Let me add to this or let me change this, that sort of thing. Cool. So you guys have like inbuilt like outs for people's like creativity. But I guess my question would be if you were to be involved in a two week game jam, do you have like a, like a little seed of an idea that you would love to see, love to breathe life into? Oh, I've got hundreds. It's hilarious you said breathe life into because that's the name of my game company, Breath of Life Art Studio. <laughs> <laughs> look at wow. that. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Great. Well, so my it's... first game will probably be coming out in a year or so for iPhone, iPad. So. Oh, cool. There you go. We're going to do more plugs at the end of the show. That's, that's interesting to hear. So, exclusive. Exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Oh. Da, 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 da. Anything else, Thurbleton? Uh Yeah, I got two more. Um, what like was it like working so heavily on level design in a post release world uh like where you guys are doing like you are guys are releasing so many more uh zones than most MMOs are is it like you you've gone from a like a, a years based like time frame to okay we have to get this done in this month and we have this small window to work on is it like is it new territory for you guys or like what's the atmosphere like well it's in a way, it's new. In a way, it's not because we're, you know, we've spent years perfecting our craft, and but yes, it's new because the team composition is different. The deadlines are different. Right. It's it's kind of exhilarating. We're we're still hammering out um, how uh, still hammering out what appropriate schedules are. I think uh, the holiday team was extremely slammed from the beginning. I think I was working harder on holiday than uh, the months leading up to release. Wow. Okay. Because, I mean, we had zero planned when we <laughs> released. And it was like, okay, guys, you know, Halloween's coming up. Make something cool. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, I, I was, like, able to, like, uh, point this out to a few people. But, like, it's they, they came up with this with this small window. And this is just, like, some things you guys have gleaned in, in the uh, – previous like just releases or announcements it's just like with the upcoming months we're going to see a ton more things and it's it's, it's like i really hope they're working on like okay you guys have six months to work on this this month's update um yeah. so it's, it's really nice to hear hear about that. That, that that's what we're working up to is saying okay what's what's an appropriate amount of time to make something very cool and not ruin everyone's lives <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> And and my last question is, uh, and th this is something that like is we'll probably get if if ever released like years from now if you guys ever start working on like is is the next dragon or two dragons away is is Primordius where it's underground and I wonder if like with your guys' use of the like the dark room and uh, like just that that sort of like especially with the fractal uh, water path there's that feeling of you're in a huge room but you can only see like a small area of it. And that just seems like a great potential for creating a truly epic underground map. And is yeah, that like a, a feasible idea as, as a level designer? Is that something that you guys think like you might try incorporating? Uh, I mean, absolutely. It's in our tool of our bag of tools, right? So yeah. um, 
doing a whole region with that flavor, with that theme, would that'd be totally great. Um, I, I have to say that... You, you that there's there's still definitely an open-ended question and one that you can't, yeah, it's just, do you think there'd be a cool idea, like, from one very bad artist to one very successful artist? <laughs> <laughs> you should take, take a guess which one's which. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. I would love to do that. I, I, have, to, I have to say that um, for the fractals, the people who've done them, there's one which you're in an icy kind of area. Oh, man, that's the best one. The, the ice elemental. Um, there's two parts of that are amazing. There's the blizzard that it forms and you not be able to see the fires and such. And then there's the just the dark forest immediately preceding right. that. I, mm-hmm. how, how much of you... Because you guys do have a day-night cycle. I'm just surprised that it, it's taken till here for us to for at least in my opinion for us to really see what you guys can do i think you've done your b- best work recently for gear wars 2 especially like, well not i guess i'm calling the dark room in the world versus world late into development i'm assuming in that case but i know the fractals have been relatively recent um I, yeah well i, I mean but with with any skill set right it, well, well with a very long project you know five and a half years on guild yeah. wars 2 there's a lot of legacy stuff that you that kind of becomes a burden the mm-hmm. further you go, and so at the point where we're saying, okay, we're starting new content now, right? Then we get to lose a lot of that legacy stuff and just start fresh and and apply all the skills we've built up to that point. So can you see yourselves doing more, like playing more with lighting in the future? Because that's that was that was seriously impressive to me. There's just the forest scene specifically, having to walk with the. Um, with your torches through the forest, that was. I guess we say I guess we say is not to, not to do a throwback, but much like Bioshock, <laughs> you guys are making much more than any other MMO. The environment is playing a much more active role and being much more like a, a greater impact in our experience. It was the closest yeah. I'd ever been to playing a D and D campaign in a, in an MMO. Like like just, right. just like just co- freezing cold. Your characters like you see the breath coming up. You see wolves. You hear wolves in the forest, but you can't see them. Like that stuff, I would love to see more in the future. And I, I, yeah, I, you, I, you definitely will. Awesome! Yay! Yay. I, I just want to see more darkness. Just, that should be your thing going forward. Just just more darkness in this game. We need more <laughs> lack of light. We need, so what he's saying is the next expansion should be the dark middle chapter. Damn straight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a night. <laughs> so new barama had um, one last question and then we have one um, stinger so for the i end. guess i have two questions one was a question from the guild which i went to quickly ask um did you did design the winner's day jumping puzzle no that was actually uh <laughs> my predecessor uh <laughs> and <laughs> see but it, it's really interesting there was this huge hubble about the the mad king tower and i got right many threads, both cursing and blessing me. And, you know, they put my face up on Reddit, said, here's the face of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> a very interesting reaction to it. And I got, I got very, um, um, I, I interacted with pretty much everyone because as a, as a designer artist, like I super value feedback from fans. It right. is in my compass. Right. Mm-hmm. And, so that was a really interesting experience. And so when, when Jason Jones got the assignment to do the, the jumping puzzle for <laughs> for Winter's Day, you know, I, 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 I kind of jokingly talked to him about it. And pretty much everyone around the office is like, oh, boy, you're getting it next. <laughs> <laughs> I would say this one is, is only half as difficult. But basically putting it. Oh, well, no, we, cut off. Did we lose him? Did we lose him? Oh, no. This whole oh, have to do it all. Uh, we decided, you know, super hard stuff that it should not be for all. Right. Okay. okay. So we, we lost you in the middle there by assuming that. So you, essentially going forward for like uh, jumping poles and stuff, you don't really, you're leaning away from going super hard. Is that essentially what? At, at least, at least in these seasonal, like masses of people will be attempting this. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. There, there will still be a lot harder jumping puzzle stuff. I, I'm working on something now that is going to be stupid hard. Like, uh, <laughs> like no, it's, I, it's, I want to be that is a warning for things to come. I guess that was I want in some now. corner of the of the world a jumping puzzle that is like I want to be the guy, which is <laughs> oh man, and that's what we're shooting for. And it, it's actually way more epic than you could even imagine. It's going to blow everyone's mind. Awesome, um, big for, words, like, exclusive. <laughs> But uh, it's it's 
I also like to be inclusive. So we're going, hopefully, if I get all my wishes, we're going to have a very easy mode, regular mode, and a stupid mode. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Oh, oh wow. stupid mode sounds, sounds like my jam. Easy mode. <laughs> Woo. Damn straight easy mode. Can't wait. Extra easy mode. Teleports <laughs> me to the top. That'd yep. be nice. Um, okay, I guess my other question is, how much does lore play a factor into art design? So one of like the most interesting things I saw when starting up Guild Wars was going to the remnants of Eye of the North for my Hall of Monuments achievements. And then I went there, and it's just like this desolate area full of ghosts. And then it's just these little things, like the Zinlai chest was there, and then you op- you click it, and it's like, talk to a Zinlai agent to register your Zoom, or like open your Zinlai uh, box now. And I was just wondering, especially now that you have like ruins of old Guild Wars areas in the new game, how much does lore play a role in terms of what the new art design looks like? Uh, well, okay, so we, we have an interesting dynamic where our art director is super focused on making the most beautiful new things you could ever imagine. And then we have our lore creators who are super smart and remember every single detail of every single thing. And what happens is us environment artists and designers are kind of caught in the middle of (laughs) the clash, but we're trying to please both parties, right? Right. Right. So there's a very interesting dynamism there um, that uh, it, it creates a lot of, interesting things for sure i I mean what you're talking about that experience is um uh, you know ideally we're always striving for that to to get there's a sense of 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 history of living world and uh nostalgia to a certain extent right because it was like oh man i was there 250 years ago (laughs) i have to say like diving underwater and seeing the the um the the remnants of the temple of ages that was (sighs) That's always the same thing in in LA with you know the remnants of old lines yeah. arch. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so we have a lot of fun with that, and we try to include as as much as we possibly can. I'm I'm always hitting up the writers and saying, is, is this appropriate? Does this seem right? And uh, we have a we have a guy who's kind of a uh, bored Nazi, I guess. You call him. I knew it. <laughs> exactly. I, yes, I was exactly going to ask that or, question. <laughs> he will. He will email us. You know, he keeps a very close eye on all the maps and development, <laughs> and he will send us an email and say, you know, in this book that <laughs> you know, on, oh, I'm still waiting for that third book. <laughs> <laughs> this should look like that, or this should be over here, or whatever. Right. Fantastic. Most of the time, we're like, okay, that works. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's fantastic. Awesome. So that, that's much all the, the major questions we had. We have one more, but I want to show, leave that to the end of the show. Um, I, this might be coming out as left field, but is there anything you want to ask us? As like we're fans, we we played a bunch of Guild Wars right. two. Do you have any questions for us as fans? And Guild Wars one. And Guild Wars one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I guess I, I guess the the thing in general I I try to get out of people is. Uh, you know, as far as experiences go, do you have a top experience playing the game? And the more I collect from people, the more I can try to replicate that in, in further content, you know? Oh, so if, I, if anyone has any particularly fond memory for, of an event or a For me... Scene, I actually want to say fractals. <laughs> if, if, Cynic, you're going to say that too. Uh, no, 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 not got... fractals specifically, but like the idea of incorporating a lot more environmental factors into the gameplay, I think that's just really great. It's not just simply, oh, right. move here, do that. You have to consider other factors, yeah. which is the environment, um, while fighting a dragon or whatever. I think that's really interesting, and I would like to see a lot more of that. I, yeah, it continues on from me saying before. Like, I think they've done a lot of their best work like just recently. Like, I, you guys just keep getting better and better, which is kind of awesome. But um, I'd say like for me, obviously, like my best moments in Guild Wars 2 are like, PvP-related. I, I, I start like those matches will always be memorable to me to some extent but um in terms of, like exploration and stuff for me like the single coolest moment in Guild Wars 2 was aside, it's it's hard but the one i want to bring up is um walking over the crevasse in divinity's reach and wondering what's down there like, oh just, right i, I, I want to know that so Bad. Like what happened? <laughs> I just want to go <laughs> down. I just want to see. Sickle? I just want to go down and see. I just, I just need to know. Like I, I, just, I think pretty much everyone in that guild has run around that entire like 
hole in the ground and just trying to like jump, trying to jump off. Just, just trying to jump up over those like invisible walls and shit just trying to get down there because we just want to see what's there um there, there is such an amazing story behind that hole uh you know i might get in trouble for telling you that but this isn't future stuff this is why that hole exists from a right. development standpoint okay is um okay so don't tell anyone <laughs> sure is, <laughs> i promise you're gonna stay <laughs> So it, we're so just gonna keep we, this recording for ourselves. We had a Cantha district there, and no way. Got, yeah, and it was built out. It was polished. It was beautiful, and we kept getting feedback about the Asian market, and the problem, and everyone was having a problem with it because the Chinese don't like having their architecture mixed with Koreans and the Koreans don't like having their oh, holy crap. And, it's, and of course it's fantasy smorgasbord, right? It's, yeah. it's mm-hmm. got, yeah. you know, Gothic mixed with Nordic mixed, you know, that's just the way fantasy works, but not over there apparently. And very got, distinct cultures. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that as a Korean person. So, <laughs> so yeah, it, it got to the point where we're like, well, what do we do with this spot? We don't have time to rebuild a computer. That's incredible. Duke it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's absolutely great. This what whole podcast has to be problem? worth it. You That's sink amazing. it into the ground. You <laughs> new lore moving forward came out of that. That's going to be pretty pretty cool. So. Oh, that's going to... I'm excited. I, I cannot I'm wait. Excited. I cannot wait. But but go like because you guys are gonna have to. I'm I'm putting words in your mouth now. But you will have to do Cantha at some point. How's that gonna reflect? Because you still have those same problems, won't you? Or you just That's gonna have to. That's a great question, and I have no idea the answer to that. Oh man, <laughs> you can neither conform or deny. But it seems like it'd be a pretty tough question to yeah. answer. Yeah. Well, it be even then. Like, do you have any ideas? Like, how would you approach solving that problem? Because you, that'll still be a thing. They they will still have the same problems with Cantha if you ever do it. Do you yeah, have any ideas? I don't, I don't, I, it, it, to me, it would be tragic if we had to leave that entire thing behind because of oh. you know, some kind of societal hang-up. But, right. you know, oh, I man. don't have control of that. <laughs> Just say, you know, there's different kinds of canthons, some Korean canthons, some Chinese canthons, and they well, all say, mix say, up say, together. Going, going back to Gilders 1, did you guys run into that sort of issue when you were doing Cantha for the first game, when you were I building factions? The names were like, there oh. were some Japanese sounding names, there were some Chinese sounding names, and there were a couple of Korean sounding names, was the only notice, like big notice difference I noticed. Yeah, there, I, I mean, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Culture. Uh, you're gonna have to figure that out because I I want to see the JC again. I I need to see the JC. Me too. Um, <laughs> Thermalton, you had a question. Well, it's uh, I do have a question. Of uh, one other thing, I, I just want to like on the on his uh, question to us of just a uh, memorable places. There's there's two. One is in I th- want to say the Iron Marches, but it's this whole meta event where it's you you raise these guys and but basically there is an annoying flame char shaman involved. And I just love it because of the name, which is not an environmental thing at all, but that's, that's my, <laughs> just the fact that, that it's called annoying. Yes. He's dumb. <laughs> it's like either, either they couldn't think of a name or they're just like, we're just going to name this guy annoying flame char shaman. <laughs> and make him annoying. Is oh, he annoying? He, like actually, oh. he pops up every now and then and you can't kill him even though you try. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and what's uh, the second one? And, and, and uh, the, the second one is just, uh, it's running around in world versus world and just like knocking people off cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> Which is um, it is so much fun to do, but I mean, like as, as an environment, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess this can be the end, que- end question. As um, like you, you obviously, you guys probably may or may not have been expecting the amount of commitment to world versus world, but does it bug you as an, a, a level designer that there's only two maps? Like, have you ever wanted to just like redo the Borderlands? So they're they're completely identical in terms of structure. It's just one is like char themed, one is like a jungle. Uh, or have you always been like, eh, it's fine? <laughs> I would just say, stay tuned. 
Ooh. Oh, 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 that's the best thing you could have said. Um, Exclusive. <laughs> we haven't done everyone's favorite moments, and I do want to get that question answered. I, I, I have to add a second one, though, because I'm a host and I get to do that kind of thing. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, that's geez. unfair. One of them is uh, there's this, I for, I've forgotten the region, but in the char areas, there's this hut where these little kids are playing outside. And then there's a, um evil witch-like woman who oh, walks yes. out of the hut okay, I know that and kills all the kids and stuff. <laughs> That <laughs> oh right, that's that, the isn't that Iron Marches? No, that's not Iron Marches. It's I think it's Iron Marches. Yeah, um, that Kidnaps, is right. Kidnaps. <laughs> well, don't them. they become ghosts at some point? I I, I don't remember. It, it was like a like it, maybe it's just ago, an but... out of body experience. Maybe they're not dead. Just the darkness yeah, of that I, moment I actually, was. I haven't played that event since we since we shipped. I think I I played it a couple years before, so I have no idea what it actually is now. Yeah, but I, I remember the debate in the design room about. <laughs> <laughs> Even Bethesda doesn't kill kids. <laughs> just the, dark, the that thing I just remember being really, really dark, and I was like, I love this. this yeah, because even even the area, even in the middle of the, that, the that, day, that, is extremely that, dark. Spiders, doesn't it? Sorry. Does it have ghost spiders? Uh, I think. So. I think so because uh, the heart, the heart right near there is you got to escort the people oh, back the to their bodies. To body. Yeah. yeah. And I th- I'm pretty sure there are ghost spiders. Oh, involved. that's how they solved it. Okay, they're dead, but you bring them back to life. Okay. I think yep. so. Out of body. <laughs> they're that's not great. dead. Because I think I failed that event, and so they stayed dead. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's oh, what no. happened. <laughs> um, you killed those children. Today. That's exactly. <laughs> I was the only one there. I could not do it all alone. Um, oh, yeah. with that attitude, you can't. And yep. another, and it's like the area to where you're walking through, and all the forest is on fire. That was also oh. absolutely spectacular. That reminds me of that zone with um, in Eye of the North. I, it's like a really far fetched thing, so I'm surprised if no, I wouldn't be surprised if no one knows it. But it's like that flame elemental with the Titan X thing at like uh... the very bottom of of like the Char Land. Char oh yeah, that's right where um, there was a dungeon there. I don't remember what it's yeah. called. It's I forget. It's the Ooze Pit. Ooze Pit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think no. I was on that area. The, I, I remember doing the the Burning Forest. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, Brent, Brent it, no, it's Cathandrax really, that's there. I really hate how everyone it's says the char lands look all the same. It's like, no, they don't. They there's do like the, this t- there's a two star zones, then there's all branded zones, and then the final zone is on fire yeah, everywhere. It's, it's so cool. <laughs> Thurlton, what's your favorite? You've done your favorite already? Or have yeah, you? yeah, I, think, yeah, I okay. believe we got Durin left. Durin? Um I'm I'm gonna cheat a little bit on mine. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna I, I'm not going to like the whole specific sh- moment in the game itself, um, but again, like ha- somebody who has come from, like, it, like like they said before, I didn't play Guild Wars One. Uh, my MMO history pre Guild Wars Two was lots and lots of years of WoW. Yep. So, if there's one thing I, I really enjoy about Guild Wars Two that I would love to see you guys continue, it's just these constant updates, like constantly right. having just new, fresh stuff to play in this game. Because coming from um, uh, you know games like WoW um, and, and you know Star Wars and games that kind of follow that same um development plan like you run out of stuff to do so quickly and you you there's there's so little like there's so much game there but so little to do and 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 it's 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 refreshing having this constantly like an an actual constantly evolving world which i know is a challenge to do anyway in a in a game like an MMO where there is no real persistence right. um so it's a, it's a, a nice fresh change uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm really, I'm really hoping to like. Uh, I'm going through zones, like just doing completion or something, and I really want to just see you guys have like continued the story of the dynamic events that happen in like Nagling, for example. Going back to the, it's, it's a, a char town that's always under attack by a giant, and I just want to come back one day and find it's a, a huge crater, or they found some giant killing machine that they had in a shed in the back, or like a yeah. huge statue made from his bones. That would be cool. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. It's just like it, the idea of progressing story and new content is just right. really exciting. I'm going to, yeah. because Durian didn't have a real one because he sucks. I'm going to cheat and do another <laughs> one. Um, oh, what? What is Mel- this? Melkor's Leap, that area. Pretty much all of Ra. Just like the crazy. Oh, with, all, with all the all, temples. All of Ore and stuff. Yeah. Oh. Just the, the, just, I have not seen something that was like grown underwater brought it's like atlantis it's 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 something that's happened underwater and brought zombie up zombie atlantis yeah and brought, brought up to a livable space inverted commas where you can see coral and you can see all that stuff above ground above water just livable so different 
air quotes. Inverted commas. Um, so different from anything else I've seen. Like as an endgame area, like compare that to Final Fantasy where you're inevitably floating in space or... Like... It's funny. I, I, you know, I'm, I, I did Melkor's Leap and I hated that map the most. <laughs> I was frustrated to tears most right. of the time because the, we had so little um, recognizable... You know, we, 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 our design doc says, put a farmhouse here, put a, you know, a <laughs> mansion here. And we didn't have any of those props, so everything is just cobbled together from all these random bits and pieces <laughs> of crap. Um, so it was super time-consuming and super frustrating, but, I mean, people like it. I'm happy. Uh, the, the discs in the water <laughs> in, the, in the top left-hand corner, I think it was? The big... Yeah. Those are amazing I, I i saw those like i want to know why those are there why are those there they don't make sense i love it so yeah that, that's that kind of stuff well, there because that's what i had to work with <laughs> <laughs> like, Perfect just answer. like takes takes the scale of everything to the max it just yeah. sets it all the way to 11 mm -hmm. and one of my favorite thing is uh Actually, in the place where like Malcor apparently just like jumped off. Yeah. Uh, if you fall off the edge there, you have time before you hit the ground to open up your map and waypoint somewhere. <laughs> it's that far <laughs> up. It is so far that's, up. That's like that's not in an MMO, another MMO I've played or another map. Mm -hmm. Well, see, it, it's because I got the diving in, so I was like, well, here's another. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it seems it seems like people really like that because recently I know they added more places with goggles and a separate achievement yeah. for it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, and one thing I will say real quickly is is um, just underwater zones in general. Like, oh yeah, I I have not seen a game do underwater better than Guild Wars Two. Period. Ever. Yeah. Not that, ever. So so here here's a couple of things that are interesting about Guild Wars Two is that so much of the team worked on Guild Wars One and were so repressed. <laughs> by not being able to jump and not being able to swim, that I think well, you can that slash jump. Channel that repressed enthusiasm into Guild Wars, and it exploded vertically, right? Right. <laughs> the water into the That's true. That it completely did. Oh man, I think like one of the worst memories of Guild Wars One was like these shin high hills you can climb because of like the vertical restrictions. This enemy died up there yeah. and the loot is up there. I can and just now, lift now, my leg like half a foot. I don't know why, but every time I'm running around, I never run. I just jump around. I, yeah. I just press space That's while true. holding R and then just jump, 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 jump. And hopefully I can climb up oh, somewhere. Oh, so you're the one who no. got it suppressed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, yeah. who, worked, who worked on the right, laugh, on the on the oh, castle? I laughed at you guys all sighed at the same time. Right, I, I was sighing because I, I, I like one one another big mystery to me uh, next to the um the hole in the ground into Vinny's Reach is the castle. I keep forgetting what its name is. Oh, but oh yes. the the Galrath one. wizards something. Oh yeah, the Galrath one. Yeah, what, what's it called? Wizards the floating something. One? The floating yes, one. Yeah, floating yeah. castle. Of, uh, yeah, yeah. The one like Howl's I first got there in this game, and I was like, "We we have to go up there in this game. That's going to happen." I calling it, yeah. and the game ended, and we never went into that castle, and I was so angry because <laughs> being there for two hundred fifty years. That's one of those you know, things where we had plans from the beginning to do a specific thing, and then we're just okay at the end. What what can we put off and make additional content later? And that's one of those you know fell into that category. Oh, I hope you get around oh. to it. I really I hope wait. you get around to it because that's I've always I, I really wanted to go like up there. the town that, it, that I built that town uh, overlooking it. Oh, I cool. really like the brutality of that town. Yeah, I I, I totally agree. Like that like, Spanish seaside sort of thing. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, nice yeah. little natural harbor going on. Yeah, I totally like that town. It's, it's, that's sort of actually one of my favorite towns in the game. Anyway. So is, is everyone know. spent? Is that has everyone done there? Is Noob have you done your favorite spot um, or favorite yeah. experience? Cool. So that, that, I do the, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so wait, that's I guess everything, right? Is there any other questions? Oh, I first get Josh? mine in. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, Shimboy Sh 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 didn't get his. Go. I'll take his. In in the the world we world the EB jumping puzzle. I remember when we we did one of these episodes way back in the betas, and you were talking about the jumping puzzle in the dark room. Yep. I was like, yeah, it's probably just kind of dark. I don't really know. <laughs> then I walked in, and I I didn't realize the torches were right there. And I walked in, and I was like, I can't see anything. This is terrible. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. But every I, time I these guys play with lighting, I, I'm. For first, you don't expect that from an MMO. Like first of all, and most a lot of games just don't go there. Like e even if you look at like Silent Hill and stuff, um, you don't see people playing with what you can do with darkness. And I, I just oh, and also 
that people. another thing speaking of that that same puzzle uh the moment i realized that the thing in the front of it is um a model of uh, everything yeah. behind it it's was, it, it's indiana jones nice. homage right yeah absolutely oh uh, speaking of nice. indiana jones homage i have to ask this at the end of ask on catacombs Work there's a room expanse. oh oh yeah that, that one yeah go, go. there's oh, a room yeah. with the invisible bridges uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> what's the deal that's all i want is there anything there because i haven't i've been like been there a bunch of times and i just yeah, can't we, find we anything scoured that place really um that's a good question i haven't been there as post-launch so i'm not sure I, they're supposed to be uh Ooh. I, I remember they built a treasure chest with a skeleton draped over it with an indie <gasps> cap. Oh, oh no! Okay. What? Shift That's totally order. not there. Things. Uh, the thing you're thinking of with the with the skeleton and the Indiana Jones hat is in the char starting zone on the like in that jumping puzzle. No, 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 no. That's, no, no, no. Where to, did. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He's referring to is the dungeon, the Ascalonian Catacombs dungeon. Oh, yeah, I know. I I worked. I built that dungeon. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't do the jumping puzzle at the end. That was uh, Aaron. He he did some polish work later. Um, and I don't, I, I swear. There used no, to be something I, there. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I can't, I can't remember well enough. I mean, the room, the room itself is neat because yeah, unless, there, unless like you're it's... looking for it, it's extremely hard to find. And once you yeah. get in, it, it's still neat because you got, you know, the Indiana Jones style invisible bridges with like the sand on them. So you can tell where they actually are and stuff like that. I was just wondering if, if there was anything in there that, so, that you knew about anyway that I had So we found. could do this all day, just ask random esoteric questions about things we want to see. <laughs> this is the great thing. When you give fans... Indiana it, Jones popped up, so I had to, I had to bring it up. <laughs> but um, so any, I just want to quickly round this out. Um, Josh, is there anything else you What's want to ask us? What's your favorite animal? <laughs> God damn it. Anything else you want to ask us? Or, or shall we get to plugs? Because you do have something to plug, and I, d- I definitely want to give you that opportunity. Uh, no, I mean... I. Just like collecting feedback, so yeah, I'd love to chat all day. Yeah. Yeah, you should have me back when my next uh, when my next project wraps up and launches. And uh, oh, absolutely, you guys. Oh, I don't know. We got a whole yeah. list of arena devs that we have. Like yeah. uh, Scarlett, <laughs> you're having Scarlett Johansson next week. Great. <laughs> Video podcast. What? So <laughs> you're, you're so you're working on something in your end, uh, Josh. Uh, tell us about it. You, you, we had an agreement, or, or, or someone told me that you had something to plug. I would love to hear about That's it. That's right. It's in my contract. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Yeah. How do you get an arena <laughs> deal? We signed <laughs> the big reveal. So it's it's not it's it's actually bad timing for me to try to plug it because it's not done yet. <laughs> but what I was talking about before this this video that I'm doing on uh, story and video games. So. Yeah. Um, right now, anyone can go to YouTube and do a search for Josh Foreman. Uh, I think I'm probably the second or third thing down. There's me giving a lecture at DigiPen or something. Mm-hmm. But um, if, if you go to my YouTube account and you can see a bunch of little snippets of the project that I'm working on, where I've, uh, it, it's a variety of things, making a variety of points. Right now, it's not coherent. doesn't make a lot of sense because it doesn't have the me talking in between to stitch it all together. <laughs> right. But, <laughs> but it, it's still it's still fun, silly stuff to look at. Um, sure. And maybe next time you have me on, I will uh, have it finished and have a final address I could give you guys. Oh, that's right. cool. This is exciting. That, that exciting. I, I, there's so many things we took away from today. I, 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 for me, it's pretty much the number one with a bullet point is, oh my god, there used to be a little Canton outpost. Ah. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> and with that. Um, wait, 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 wait. One last question. Yeah. <laughs> if, all right. God damn it. God damn Knife it, dude. Or, knives or bats? Oh, oh shit. Oh, yes. Oh. We need to do this. We need oh, yeah. to do this. Okay. All right. So have you, have you heard this, this like it, it is an deep internet societal question. construct? This is like right. deep, like question equivalent to. You're building to, this up way too much. It's like, it's like the meaning of life. It it's it like deserves. the meaning of life, right? It's a question <laughs> of knives and bats. If you were in a competition or some form of like battle to the death, where you and your op- opponent were given the option of a single knife or a single bat, and your opponent would have the other. So essentially, if you pick the bat, he'd get the knife, and you're forced to duel to the death. Which would you pick, the bat or the knife? A oh, bat, hands down. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Good decision. <laughs> Good decision. Damn straight. What's I mean, your reasoning? As, as what long, like- you know, I wouldn't be an idiot. I wouldn't take a full, you know, wind up swing with it. That's yeah. Right. 
Hey, thank you. Yeah. You rock. You gotta I, go with the, the reach advantage. Exactly. Is what, yeah. what it's all about. But can but use a bat in so many you can ways. throw knives and they're one hit kills. <laughs> yeah, I, like I tried and I, yeah. <laughs> And with that, go well for people who don't know how to throw knives. Thank you, Josh Foreman, for being on the Lincoln Cast. It was a fantastic. Arigato gozaimasu. This went way longer than we thought <laughs> they it would. Back home. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for fun. saying yes to that one creepy uh, mesmer who <laughs> was with with just a bunch of people <laughs> blowing up fireworks, trying to lag, disconnect people in Lion's Arch that Halloween day. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love talking to players just because like I said as an artist getting feedback is so incredibly valuable to me so I appreciate Fantastic. it that, that, that's great. yeah you've been a great guest and thank you for being here thanks for the listeners for listening i assume you you stayed this far because it's much the only interesting episode we've ever done so yeah yep. ever, ever, except that uh <laughs> thanksgiving episode well, i was yeah it was pretty good yeah anyway thanks for listening Even that I was the link to cast that episode 34 yeah, have a merry merry christmas and a happy new year no no happy holidays man <laughs> Merry Christmas. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Have fun stomping on things in my airship. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Ooh. We will. Airship party. Bye. Bye. All right. And that's the end of the show. <laughs> no. That's going to be cut. That, no, that's, <laughs> to, that's totally going to be That's totally going to be there. <laughs> and we can never <laughs> nail the ending, ever. No. <laughs>